scatters ready, everybody? Or what? Are we scattering? Yeah, okay, we're scattering. I see. Okay. <laughs> What's up, everybody? What is this poll again? What is this poll right now? What, what? Razor, thank you for the eight months. How good is Runic for hire right now? Uh, I assume you mean TCG? It's all right. <laughs> Slayer, thank you for the seven months. Appreciate you. I'm glad you liked the, the Gamescom thingy. I was wondering how you guys would like it. Uh, I thought it was I thought it was pretty fun. I think the production quality was pretty good, uh, and I I enjoyed it. I think it was fun. It was it was something different. Uh, it was something different, but I I enjoyed it. So I think it was cool. Uh, Ogre was taken. Thank you for the 19 months. And ZV, thank you for the gifts up to Ray Cosplays 280. <laughs> you got them ready. Okay. Which one? Uh, what 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 are you referring to when you say normal summon Robina in Pokemon? Which which one are you referring to? Like, is it because I played Natu and Xatu? Is that Robina? Oh, yeah, I see. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Strider, thank you for the eight months. Appreciate you. Cap Kermit, thank you for the 20 months. Appreciate that. Thank you. Can we get Lampy's drawing of Psychic and Punisher as a new emote? Dude, that, that was probably the most outrageous game of Pictionary I've ever witnessed in my entire life. Unironically. Unironically, I have never seen... And uh, that that was crazy. I couldn't believe the things that happened during that Pictionary game. That was actually that was insane. That was actually insane. <laughs> Are you racing Wawa to uh, to Duelist level twenty, dude? Farfa keeps dodging me for no reason like i i keep asking him are we doing this now and he keeps coming up with different reasons on why we can't do it today uh our current plan is to do it tomorrow if we're not doing it tomorrow if he bails on me one more time i'll just do it on myself i'll just do it on my own i'll just i'll just play to level 20 normally tomorrow if 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 farfa doesn't show up tomorrow for a for a duelist level 20 race uh i'll just i'll just do it so tomorrow we're doing it Either way. Tomorrow we're hitting level 20 either way, no matter what. So, yeah. Uh, it's crazy. Thank you for the 22. No racing, Saj. I mean, yeah, I guess. But, like, I, I think it's going to happen tomorrow. That is my last... Uh, that's my last... Uh, you know, the, the last info that I have is that we're doing it tomorrow. Uh, Dyro96, thank you for the four months. Appreciate you. Thank you. All right. Are we reviewing the Cosmo deck? What is the Cosmo deck? Are you a spreadsheet Andy today? So I looked at the spreadsheet this morning because I was considering looking at something from it, but I didn't see that much that was worth it. To, to do like some deck profiles today, we can if there's like one or two specific decks that you guys are interested in. For the most part, it was a decent amount of... Uh, I mean, I, w I want to say it was all standard, but like there, uh, I looked, I, I glanced over it before the stream and it was like, all right. Uh, Yoshi TV, thank you for the 12 months. Appreciate the full year of support. Uh, we're playing some Master Duel later. Maybe we'll play Striker. I don't know yet. Uh, we'll, we'll just play a little bit of everything, I think. Uh, but we, we could play a game or two of Striker. I don't mind. <laughs> uh thank you for the five months and cb cool like thank you for the seven okay all right uh once again sorry for not streaming yesterday i was just really really tired from the weekend i also got a little bit sick i think you could hear it during the during the gamescom stream I, I, my nose was puffed uh over the uh, over the weekend it's getting better now i'm doing all right but uh yeah yesterday i was just feeling a little uh, a little tired Thoughts on new trick stars? Wait, is there, uh, is there new cards? I checked YG organization this morning and there was... No oh, wait, wait. Uh, new trick stars? I can't see any new trick stars. There are new trick stars? Uh, bup, 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 where? 
Where is that? Anyways, link me the new trick stars. Link me the new trick stars. We'll look at it in a second. We'll do the warm up first, uh, and then we'll look at new trick stars. Uh, you lag and G. Think about a prime as well. Uh, any UK events this year? Well, that depends if we get a UK YCS. Uh, I typically don't travel to other countries for smaller stuff than YCSs. So you know, if we do get one, then I will be in the UK. Oh, that's why I'm not seeing the Trickstar cards, because this is from a couple days ago. Okay, yeah, I missed that. I missed that completely. Cool, okay. Yeah, we'll look at those in a second. All right, let's do warm-up first. Let us do warm-up first, and then uh, we shall we shall get into some, some stuff. All right, here we are. Uh, Today is going to be glorious. Believe, Chad, believe. Okay, let's go. This looks very familiar. This is branded stuff. Ah, oh, but it's like... Uh, branded Lost? Is it Branded Lost? Or Loss? No. Etude? I don't know if it's Etude. No. Oh, that's annoying. Branded Disciple. Okay. Great start. Great start. Uh, Seal of Orichalcos? No. Wait, what is that? Spellbinding? Oh, right, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spellbinding Circle. Uh, but that's is that is that snow dust snow dust giant yeah um is that an ice jade i think that's an ice jade i think it is an ice jade acti no Cosmochlor. Nope. Okay, I don't. I. Tremora. Wonderful. Uh, that's yellow. Uh, yellow star. McKnight. Oh, I feel like I've seen this. This is like Veil of... No. Oton... Rainbow Veil? Oton Veil. Oton Veil. Okay, this is old. I feel like I know this. Oh yeah, that's Fissure. Oh, Gem Knight. No. Wait, is it Garnet? Oh, it is Garnet. I thought Garnet was more yellow. Um, Mrs. Radiant. No, that was my only guess. Gift exchange. Is it gift exchange? Really? Oh, it's gift exchange. Isn't that the one where he has the shirt and looks so, so pissed about it? Uh, that's chain disappearance. It is? Okay. That's my favorite one. Wash today, Satch. Hey, it's not done yet. It's not done yet. Calm down. I've never seen this in my life. Um, 
Eh. Danger Dogman? Uh, oh, hä? Huh? I have never realized he does that thing. I thought that was a spell card dog. I don't want to talk about it. You know what? I don't want to talk about it. This is something uh, approach. Darkness approaches. We start the stream and delete the mod. People cry. <laughs> That's a redux. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. Um, I don't know this one. Space Dragster. Um, this is Ropa Ropa Chiamaru, right? Chio Rapa Chiamaru. No. Digger? That's a ninjutsu card? That looks so much like the S-Force thing. Uh, that's Silver Fang. That's another ninjutsu thingy. Um, that's like the one that draws two. I think you send one and draw two. I don't know what the thing is called though. Gallant scroll? No. Alchemy, that's the one. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a... I know rest. No, it's a it's a Luna Light. Um, Luna Light. Panther Dancer, maybe. No. Leo Dancer. No, I don't know. Looks like a wolf. Um, that's Neo's wise man. I don't know what's going on here. Cracking dragon. Oh, that's diagram. Oh god, why did it take so long? All right, we're only halfway through. It's not it's not over until it's over. I don't know what that is. It might be over. <laughs> Uh, this is... Is this just Firewall? Proxy Dragon? Maybe it's Proxy Dragon. No. Lanfo? Lanforinkus, okay. Uh, Metal Foes. Uh, Auric Hulk? Uh, Dragoonity Legionnaire? Please? No. Senatus? No. Who is this? Trebus? Ah, goddamn. Uh, surely that's just Skyscraper. Yep. Uh, 
what is happening on this card? A lot. Who is this? Starving? Venomy? Venomy. Dude, there's even two. And neither of them are correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you a lot. Appreciate you guys. Uh, Rocket Warrior. Uh, Ghost Jammer, I think is what that's called. It's something Jammer. No, it's not. Ghost Ship. Ghost Ship. Uh, Shadol Hedgehog. Don't know what that is. I don't think. Oh, it's an empowered, I think. Can I guess the empowered? Aha! I can. Easy clap. Uh, Neftis. Neftis, but. Oh, I don't know what the name is. I, it might. I, it, it's. It's not a link monster. I think it's. It must be a spell trap. Awakening. Yeah. Uh, these guys are. Oh, I've seen this one. I don't. I have no idea what it's called though. Oh, is it Rainbowzo? Yeah, it's Rainbowzo. <laughs> uh. Dude, who are you? That's Helshadol Hollow? Okay. If you say so. I feel like I've seen this. Oh yeah, that's the Nordic. Uh, Nordic. Yeah, and now what? And now what? Vanadis? No. I, uh, I, I don't know. I, yeah, I've seen it. Valkyrie of the Nordic Ascendant. Okay. Oh, this looks familiar as well. Oh, the Noble Knight. Is that Galahad? Nope, that doesn't even exist. Artorigus? Artorigus. Yeah, okay, nice. Tamplox, thank you for the 14. Appreciate you. Ah! I know him. Uh, he's like two tributes for a fire monster. Uh, something flame, flame ruler, that's the one. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got no idea. Actually, <laughs> okay, yeah, guess Gishki Emilia on the second tribe. I can't guess Runic Slumber, dude. What the hell is going on? Um, dude, I've never looked at Runic Slumber in that much detail. It, it's not... It, it's... Look. <laughs> I've seen this a thousand percent. I've seen this guy. Bear Blocker? Broker. 
That's gigantic. Oh, I didn't even need to zoom. Okay. Gigantic. Right. Oh, dude, not a cybers. Not like this. Yeah, I don't care. Link the votee. Gen X, yeah, cool. Gen X, I think Gen X Li. Power cell. Nope. Gen X Li. Triforce. Nope. Solid. Oh, it was solid. Okay. Well, you know. Um, yeah, nah, the, look, I'm sick, okay, I can't properly see because my nose is stuffed, and I also can't really hear the images, so it's like not reasonable to expect me to guess them, okay? Oh. Level 4 effect monster, 1500 attack, low defense, newer than 2015. What's a level 4 with 1500 attack that is less than 1500 defense? Circular? Wait. Oh no, it's, it can't be circular. Okay, thank god. I, I probably would have ended stream if it was circular today. I think... I think that's the thing we have to do. If it is circular, I'm we, we probably don't stream that day because that's just not a good sign. I don't think I want. Yeah, yeah. I think that's something we need to. We need to. Yeah, we. I think we can agree on that. Uh, Sansa Pari, I think with a six months. Appreciate you. It already was circular once. Yeah, and was it a good day? I don't remember actually. <laughs> Maybe it was. <laughs> Uh, okay, what's a level 4 with 15 hour attack? Uh, from like recent, I mean recent, 2016. Agito? Not Agito, but it is Earth, and it's not just an effect monster. Oh, what about, uh, Pendulum Sorcerer? Not a Pendulum. Not a Pendulum. Analyzer? Analyzer. Not Analyzer either. Uh, oh, that couldn't be it because of the defense points. Year 9,999. Yeah, they got the wrong year on some of the cards uh, where it's just automatically 9,999. I don't know why. Um, okay, so the year is... So it's not a tuner, not a pendulum. So it's, 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 it can be a few things still. It can be a synchro. It can be an exceed. No, it can't be an exceed. It can be a synchro, a ritual, theoretically. Is there a megalith? Megalith have earth monsters, right? Oh, but they're all 2020. Yeah, it's not 2020. So it's not a megalith. Melfi synchro? Mary... Melf, it, it could be that. Oh yeah, Mary Melfi's, or it's it says cheerful Melfi's, but it, it's Mary Melfi's. Yeah, okay, not bad. Uh, a person typing. Thank you for the fourteen months. Welcome back. Appreciate you guys for the support. All right, um, more or less successful warm up today. Let's just not talk about it. You know what? Let's just not. Let's move on. Let's do some streaming. How about that? Um, okay. Once again, uh, I was gone for a couple of days over the weekend for the for the Gamescom event thingy. I hope you liked the stream for that on Saturday. Um, it was a lot of fun to do. Thank you for uh, thank you to Card Sports League for putting it on. I think the production quality was really nice. I really like it. If I ever uh, 
it really made me want to like think about the hosting like special events in the future for streaming like streamed events and doing it with them like it'd be pretty cool i think um but uh yeah that's a that's a thing for the future i don't know yet exactly but that being said i um i i uh i missed a couple things i'm pretty sure it wasn't actually that much it wasn't actually that much that happened over the last couple days i feel like for some reason they just dropped a bunch of like new cards last week but then towards like the end of the week and the weekend they just didn't drop really anything there's this one set of cards that i didn't look at yet which are the new trick stars uh so we're gonna take a look at those uh most of you have probably already seen them because it's been a couple days but i haven't seen them yet at all so let's um let's quickly take a look at them professional pokemon player now yeah i did ironically out of all the out of all the little tournaments we had um i only won the pokemon one so yeah maybe pokemon creator soon <laughs> okay uh let's get the band back together for the trick star concert uh now this is actually not i don't think this is uh this is not infinite forbidden this is a new duelist pack right they've done fire duelist pack they've done all the duelist packs i think the only one that's left is light i think this one is going to be a light duelist pack whatever so one of the themes in it is uh is tricks are also dual links enjoyers do not look at the cover of this pack you guys you are going to get uh, a little heart attack because it's got mizar on it and um yeah just don't look at it um yeah so that probably means it's also got galaxy eyes support right because that's mizar's thing right it's galaxy eyes so yeah uh we've got trick star hoodie a level two light fairy effect monster. I, I I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I don't even know what Trickstar needs to be good again. But in theory, I think the Trickstar cards are like recent enough and good enough that with good support, people could be playing Trickstar again. Um, because they've got some pretty good tools. I mean, they've got a really good field spell, a really good normal summon in Candina. Corobane is a really good extender slash you know battle hand trap whatever you want to call it so they, they've got some good cards they've got some good tricks up their sleeves i think the biggest problem with trick stars is just that they have like very bad extra deck monsters for some reason um but anyways uh level two light fairy you can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn if you control a trick star fusion or link monster you can special summon this card from your hand if this card is sent to the graveyard as material for the link summon of a trick star monster you can add a trick star fusion or trick star defusion from your deck to your hand um that is theoretically a good card but i don't think it's that easy to summon Trickstar fusions or link monsters. Trickstars don't have uh do they have a link one? They do. Can you make the link one with Candina? Also, yes. So in theory, it's possible to go normal summon Candina. Search this thing. Link one with the Candina. Special summon this thing from your hand. Make a link to and search the thing. Okay. Um, I mean, that's very unique in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! Because uh, that's a one-card combo, guys. Would you believe that? Would you believe that? Isn't that crazy? Okay. Uh, Trickstar Band Dramatis. Level 6 Light Fairy Fusion Effect Monster. Materials 2 Trickstar Monsters. Uh, you can only use the first and third effect of this card's name each once per turn. If this card's fusion summoned, add a Trickstar card from deck to hand with a different name from the cards you control and in your graveyard. Okay, any Trickstar card is, is good because this can search Reincarnation, I suppose. Uh, but I mean, Candina can also search Reincarnation, but still. Your Trickstar Link monsters that point to this card gain a thousand attack. If either player takes effect damage, you can target a face-up monster on the field, change its attack to zero uh all right not i mean not bad for a fusion monster i don't remember how good the trickstar fusion spell was like do they have any cool do they have any cool like 
tricks with the fusion spell or is it just use the materials from hand? The fusion spell is new? Wait, I mean, there's already a trick star fusion, but it just, uh, okay. All right, let's just read everything first. Trickstar Col... Colchica? Oh, that's a new Link one as well. Okay. Link bottom materials, one Link Trickstar monster. A non-Link Trickstar monster. You can only special summon this thing once per turn. You can only use the effect once per turn. When a monster is destroyed by battle involving your Trickstar monster, while this card is in your graveyard, you can banish this card... Then target one of those destroyed monsters, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the attack it had on the field. Um, this card is very good. And it's kind of annoying that it is that good. Because maybe at first glance, if you read it, maybe it's not that, maybe you think it's not that great. However, I do think this kind of card is incredibly good and like potentially problematic. I don't know. But the thing is. Um, the thing about this, the, the thing that it, this thing does is it allows you to link off any trick star into the graveyard. It creates a trick star link monster on your field, which is important, for example, for this thing, right? You need any trick star on the field, a trick star link or fusion to summon this from your hand. This is the way you can do that. And the thing is, this card does not have any effect on the field, essentially, right? But it has an effect in the graveyard, which for a card like this is super, super good and perfect, basically, because you don't want this thing to do anything on your board. You just want to summon this, special summon the other thing from hand, and then link them off, right? Just just get it into the graveyard, right? Just, just, just make it and then get it into graveyard, and then it even has a bonus effect in the graveyard. And the bonus effect, I mean... It's not the craziest bonus effect in the world, but it's just some random burn damage that you get essentially for free in a deck that, I mean, functions with burn damage, right? So, like, this card is really, really strong. And it works both ways. It works when your Trickstar monster kills your opponent's monster, or it also works if your opponent attacks over your Candina. Like, for example, you have a Candina 1800 attack, your opponent attacks over it, you banish this from the graveyard, they burn 1800. Which is not... Like that, that's, a, that's a significant amount of damage in a deck that burns a decent amount already. So, uh, that, this card's good. This card is good. Uh, Trickstar Noble Angel, Link 2. Requires two Trickstar monsters. Points bottom left, bottom right. Can only use one, two, three once per turn. If this card is Link Summoned, you can add a Blue Tears card from your deck to your hand. Okay, I don't know what the Blue Tear cards are. Uh, I would have to check that. If you have a Fusion monster on your field or in your graveyard you can target a trick star monster in your grave special summon it okay if either player takes effect damage you can target one face-up card on the field destroy it uh that card seems pretty good to me if the blue tier cards are good because all three of these this card's effects are pretty strong in my opinion like on, on link summon add a card from deck uh if you incorporate the fusion mechanic into your uh, deck you can also get a free revive off of it and then it also has an effect that pops cards so this card seems very strong to me but i would have to check what the blue tier cards are okay we have Tr trickstar defusion oh, okay you can only use the first and second each once per turn activate one of these effects fusion summon a trickstar fusion monster from your extra deck by banishing its materials from your graveyard Immediately after this effect resolves, Link summon a trick star. Oh, this is a trap card. I didn't even realize. I didn't realize it was a trap card. Okay. You can banish this card from your graveyard, then target a trick star you control. This turn, your opponent's monster cannot target monsters for attacks except that monster right. Okay. Um, hmm. The fact that it's a trap card probably makes it worse although obviously being able to fusion summon or link summon on your opponent's turn can be interesting but yeah the second effect is 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 funny in in correlation with trickstar corobane 
Because Trickstar Corobane boosts by 2,000 until the end of the turn, right? Not just end of the battle. Right? So, what you can do if you have a Coral Bane, theoretically, is you can force your opponent to attack a monster. Uh, and then you Coral Bane that monster, and then they can't get over it, and then they can't attack any of your other things. It's like, alright. But it's, it's a trap card, man, which is very, uh... Yeah. I'm, maybe, maybe you would play one as a searchable thing if there's some cool stuff you can do on the opponent's turn. You can add Corobane off the new fusion. Yeah, you can like activate the trap card, fusion summon into this thing, right? And then you add a trickstar card from deck to your hand with a different name from the cards you control in your graveyard. It's specifically good with this fusion, by the way, because this says, you know, you 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 can't have the card that you add in your graveyard. So what you can do is you can simply, if you want to search for a specific monster, you can just banish it as fusion material from your graveyard, and then you can search it again, right? Because it's not in your graveyard anymore. Like, if you have a Corobane in the graveyard already, but you want to search a Corobane, you can just go, you know, fusion this by banishing the Corobane and then searching it again. All right. But, okay, it's a searchable card, searchable trap card that has some cool tricks. Okay, sure. Uh, Maiden of Blue Tears. Okay, here we go. It's a new blue tier card. Uh, you can only use the first and second effect of this card's name uh, once per turn, I assume, and only once that turn. If your opponent special summons a monster and you control a link monster, target one of those summoned monsters, destroy it, and if you do, inflict damage to your opponent equal to half its attack. <laughs> Gnua God, thank you for the 19 months. Wait, Duel Links is getting Sky Striker? Might have to check out Duel Links. Uh, if either player takes effect damage while this card's in your graveyard, you can banish this card, then target a normal spell in your graveyard banishment, set it, but it cannot be activated this turn. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, we already had that. Sub message. I, 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 we. I don't know if you realize, but that that was the exact same one. But appreciate you, waiver. <laughs> uh, this card is not that great. I don't think. Uh, it is once again a searchable trap card, so it's not complete ass. But I don't think it's that great. I don't think it's that great. Because, like, you can't use both effects in the same turn, right? So even if you search this card, like, uh, you can, yeah, you can pop a special summit monster while you control a link monster, which is okay, but, like, not, not great. You can't use the second effect in the same turn. So on your next turn, theoretically, if you get that far, on turn three, you can do effect damage to your opponent, then you can... Banish it from the grave to reset a normal spell card, whichever one you would use in Trickstar. I don't even think Trickstar has great normal spells. I guess you can like reset the fusion spell or something like that. I don't know. Reset it. Can't activate it that turn. So that's turn three. And then you can use that spell card on turn five. That's just not that great. Right? So the second effect honestly almost doesn't really exist as far as I'm concerned. The, the, the second effect basically is not relevant in, in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. It only has the first effect, realistically, most of the time. So, is it worth it to play this card just for the first effect? I don't know. I don't know. Especially because... I mean, I guess if it's the, if it's the best target for this search, if you want to make this Link monster, you can. But, I don't know. Okay. Uh, this Trickstar support is... Not bad. There's another blue tears card. Yeah, maybe we should take a look at that real quick. Angel of blue tears. That is a spell card. All right. Angel of blue tears. Target a face up monster on the field. Its controller's opponent takes damage equal to the number of cards in their hand times 200. Then negate that target's effects until the end of this turn. 
If effect damage is inflicted, except during the damage step, you can banish this card from your grave. Set a normal trap directly from your hand or deck. If set from the hand, it can be activated this turn. You can only use one Angel of Blue Tears. Okay, that's much better. That's much better. So, you're gonna, like... Yeah, you're not gonna play this then. I don't think you're gonna play this one. I think you would play the other one. Yeah, that's that's decent. And I mean any normal trap, that's kind of that's kind of broken even. Isn't that card not new? No, this one is from Maze. Maze of Memories. So this card is like uh I mean half a year old, a year old, I'm not exactly sure. Um That's okay. That's that's better for sure. Yeah. Okay. That makes the Link Monster a lot better too if it has a good search target. Because this Link 2 is then really good. Yeah. Overall, that's good support. Honestly, I feel like as a Trickstar player, you couldn't really have asked for more than this. You know, uh, this one is strong. This one is solid if you play fusion stuff in the Trickstar deck. I'm not sure if you will, but this one is a good fusion monster. Uh, this card is really good. This card is also really good. The two traps card, the two traps are kind of whatever. Uh, the two traps are kind of whatever, but the rest is pretty strong. Okay. I don't know if that makes tricks are good enough because tricks are, I feel like they are a little scared uh, about making like really good tricks are support because tricks are is kind of like this, this goofy archetype with a weird win condition that people, some people like it, but a lot of people don't like it that much to be burned to death or especially be burned when there's like three minutes left on the clock or something like that. I don't know. Uh, it's like, it's a little awkward to have Trickstar be a super viable deck. I remember like, it, it was like one of the more annoying decks in the format in 2018, 2019, around that time when people did actually play Trickstars, but yeah, it's all right. All right. Um, cool. All right. Chat, we have a couple things planned for today. And I don't really mind in which order we do them. Uh, so uh, let's just let's let's talk about it. So we've got the uh, we've got the 2014 Yu-Gi-Oh recap, which I definitely want to watch. Uh, that's that one's gonna take some time though. Um, but I don't mind when we do that. We can do it now. We can do it later. I don't mind. Um, I want to do a a little master duel segment today where we talk about. We play some Master Duel, but we also talk about um, the current Master Duel metagame. I have a tier list prepared um, for the current format because obviously the Duelist Cup is happening this upcoming weekend, the World's Qualification and all that kind of stuff. A lot of people are interested and people ask me for what do I think is good in Master Duel right now? What should I play for the Duelist Cup? All that kind of stuff. So I have that prepared as well. Um, so we're going to be talking about Master Duel format, and we're also going to be playing some Master Duel, obviously, with some of the decks. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's something that's going to happen. Will you try to qualify? Well, I already am qualified, so no, I won't be. For this one, I won't be tryharding. So just for, just for context, just for the record, I, I, I want to do another Duelist Cup. I want to do another Duelist Cup tryhard mode. Right, like actual tryhard mode, because I don't know how many of you guys were there. I don't know how uh, how many of you guys were there when we did it the first time last year when I qualified for Worlds doing the qualifiers. Like that stream was really, really like fun for me, um, and also really successful. So I want to do that again. I want to do that again because I I just really enjoy you know I enjoy competing. And I think it was really, I, I think it was good content, genuinely, even though I didn't really, I didn't really, you know, talk much. I just, I just focused on the game and played, uh, I tried to play as good as I can and you know, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, I think it was really good and really fun. I, I, and I'm proud of that stream. I want to do it again. However, I, I would rather do that when there's more actual stuff on the line for me because I think then it's more intense and also more important for me personally to concentrate and all that kind of stuff and give it my all as opposed to right now 
when um like i'm already qualified for worlds so there's just not as much on at stake right it's not as interesting i feel like for me personally it's not as rewarding it's not uh, it, i'm not really motivated because this is like basically a duelist cup like all the duelist cups in the past before they gave worlds invites it's basically just do it for the for the for the sake of it right and i i kind of want to um i kind of want to do it again but i will probably i mean let's be real um we're going to be trying to become back-to-back -back world champions but that's not a guarantee right chances are uh, there's a definitely realistic possibility that we are not be going to be back-to-back -back world champions uh, because obviously there's going to be a lot of other very strong teams. Uh, we're going to try our best, but chances are, you know, uh, maybe it works out, but it probably doesn't, right? Um, so I want, I, I'm just going to do it after, right? Like, worlds are happening soon. Uh, I mean, in a couple months, and then we have a lot more duelist cups and world qualifiers after. And I, I I'm just gonna keep my, my, you know, my will to do another 72 hour duelist cup run. I'm just gonna keep it for when it actually matters, right? If, uh, if that makes sense, because I just think it's more interesting then, right? And I mean, if we, if we do end up becoming, uh back-to-back -back world champions then I'll, I'll also not mind that you know that's i don't think that's uh that's not gonna be the problem you know that i'm not gonna be too mad about it all right but yeah so basically uh long story short do we do uh do we do the 2014 Yu-Gi-Oh recap first or do we do master duel first i don't mind either way we just have to make sure we have enough time for the 2014 recap at some point Uh, Zelda Saber, thank you for the Prime. Chocolato, thank you for the two months. Welcome back. Uh, Hidrusi, Hidrisu Alpha, thank you for the eight months. Appreciate you. Uh, ba -ba -ba. If recap is prior, nothing is prior. We have enough time for, for all of it. Don't worry about it. Uh, Fritsch, thank you for the Prime. Appreciate you. The poll set Master Duel first. All right, cool. All right, cool, 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 cool. Uh, all right. We'll just we'll just hop into Master Duel. Uh, we'll just hop into Master Duel then and uh, play some games. Then do a tier list for Master Duel Duelist Cup format, and then uh, we'll do the 2014 Yu-Gi-Oh recap. Okay, cool. Let me boot up Master Duel. Uh, Ellie the Mutt, thank you for the 17 months. Appreciate you. Where, where are you guys getting the info from that Duel Links is getting Sky Striker? And to what extent are they getting Sky Striker? Like, uh, you know, are they getting, like, surely they can't, they can't get all the cards. There was no poll? Um, if there was, if there was no poll and I got one guide, I respect that. That's, um, that was well played. Then I, I have booted up Master Duel now, you win. If that was actually a lie. <laughs> there was okay okay uh bye thank you for the prime appreciate the first time prime thank you for the support welcome to the channel appreciate you thank you okay uh pop. uh oh there's a skill that's okay all right cool uh yoshi tracker thank you for the prime appreciate that thank you Uh, okay, so, okay, if you guys remember, maybe, hopefully not, but we had a pretty miserable time last week. The last stream of last week is something that, it wasn't really my most, uh, it wasn't really the most glorious Master Duel experience that I've ever had, because, uh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, so the, the thing is, the thing is... I was already, I was already getting kind of sick, right, over those days. Like, my nose was already a little stuffed. I didn't sleep super well the night before. Then I log on to Master Duel. I get max seed three times in one game by Dark Magician, and I lose because of it. And then immediately after, immediately after, I lose to freaking... Math mech. 
with the most absurd things that were happening. I don't even remember exactly what happened, but I know I just know it was crazy. I know it was a game that should never have been lost. Um, but yeah, no, nah, I just lost it. I just I just ended stream, dude. I just, and sometimes one of those days, sometimes I just like if I if I you know. I don't easily get frustrated, but that day, it was just a little bit too much. Anyways, um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we still haven't hit Master 1 yet, is what I'm trying to say. So, we need to do some climbing. Uh, Purina Meow Mix, thank you for the three months, appreciate you. Why not Orcus Runic? I haven't really tried Orcus Runic. Uh, I don't really have any plans. Is there anyone else who feels the same way about Master Duel at the moment? I don't really have many sort of like pet decks that I really like to play right now. Because it's just like they've kind of they've kind of destroyed all of the decks that I really liked. Like the, the, the Runic decks, the, the Vanquish Soul is kind of inconsistent. I don't know. It's just like I, I don't mind Snake Eyes. But I also don't love it in Master Duel. It's it's good. I know it's good, but I don't want to keep. I don't want to. I guess we can play the, we can play the Striker Snake Eye a little bit. You know why does this not even have Maxi? What if we play, Board Breaker, Blind Second Snake Eye. With thrust, talents, engage. So basically what I did at the regional, but we just blind second. Thrust, talent, droplet. Uh, Sky Can't spell. Sky Striker cards, one shark cannon. Uh, Hornet drones, this Kagari. Uh, well, in Master Duel, Hayate is probably better. And Widow Anchor once or twice. Uh, we play Secure Gardener. We play Linkaribo. We play Charmers. We play... Um, <laughs> uh, Gunkan Gun Suchef, thank you for the nine months. Appreciate you. Access code Celine Apo Promethean uh, Nightmare Phoenix. Uh, I mean, let's just add all the Snake Eye cards first. We have three Ash, Temple, one, maybe, maybe one Flamberge, honestly. Uh, maybe Subversion if we blind second. Um, and then Diabell Star cards, three, three. What else was there? Magician Souls? I mean, Max C. Uh, where are thou? Maybe where are thou? Curry car. Oh, yeah. Blind second curry car should probably be there. Oh, yeah. Enemy controller, of course. Enemy controller. Uh, where are thou is interesting. One for one. One for one doesn't really make sense if uh with with it doesn't have that many monsters, basically. Why two souls instead of one? I mean you can play one. Uh we can play we can probably get away with one flamberge. Uh where art thou is interesting because it's just another free spell in the graveyard. 
we can try this. And then what am I missing in the extra deck? So I've got the link ones. Um, IP mask arena is like maybe okay. Uh, we have this, we have this. We need Amblo Whale. Goddess, Whale, Sunlight Wolf. Not really. Azalea. Wait, why is it? Oh yeah, Azalea for the IP. Okay, sure. Seems all right. So the reason for Secure Gartner, guys, the reason for Secure Gartner was the same as in my regional deck profile. Secure Gartner allows you to link off Link Karibo, which means if you have the Striker cards or Magician Souls, you can make Link Karibo, and then you can link it off into Secure Gartner, and then you have Link Karibo in the graveyard, which lets you dodge Impermanent Effect Veiler on your normal summon. So with Magician Souls or the Striker cards, you can make uh, you can make it so that your normal summon can play through Imperma Veiler. That's the idea behind it. Um, let's just try this. Should be fun. Two Flambert is kind of necessary. I, I did side out one every time I would go second. So if we blind second, maybe it's all right to play uh, to play one. Runic content. I mean, we've been playing a lot of Runic recently in Master Duel. It's pretty much the oh, the my favorite deck, but yeah. Okay, we got two maxis. Our opponents got 60 cards, so maybe there's maybe they won't negate it, Copium. This hand isn't great otherwise. Most importantly, this hand would have also completely bricked going first, so. Well, there's the Alubur, so they, they got branded fusion access. Well, branded, do you just open branded fusion anyways? Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Didn't search lost? Yeah, when they didn't search lost. Oh my god, Jaugen? Wait. Well, I contributed for enemy controller, though. Not bad. Okay, we are allowed to go through the main phase here, which is good. So how does this work? Target two monsters in any graveyards. So... I kind of want to keep my max C, but I have to start with something. So I'm going to go Diabell Star Pitch Widow Anchor, I think. don't think I'm going to need the Widow Anchor. So what's the set card? It can be like Branded in Red, Branded Banishment, could be Imperm, could be Super Poly. I think those are the options. Um, Let's set Original. Sanctifier is untargetable. I am aware of that, but thank you for letting me know. So this is annoying because it's gonna it's still it's still gonna counter my original sinful spoils. It's still going to counter my original sinful spoils. Because they summon it in response here. But it makes my talents life. I haven't normal summoned yet, so I think we're okay.
Um, so what I can do is I can enemy controller take the Alubur attack over the Jaugen. I thought they were going to give me the Jaugen, honestly. That's like the safer way to do it. Uh, actually, no, it doesn't because oh, if I take it, I can use its effect. Uh, I want to... Hmm. I want to draw. Those are like criminally bad draws. Um, Poplar. If I normal summon Poplar, I can grab the field spell and try to attack over the Jaugen that way. I don't have to spend my enemy controller for it. I can cycle my wanted first though, because I already have the original in the graveyard. I can see what I draw. Uh, I don't want to draw another witch, so I'm going to take one from the deck. Let's use this. I could also add subversion, right? I forgot I added that. Sick. Nice. Good. Glad we cycled that wanted. Um... So, the problem is, if I go Poplar into Subversion, what's my play after? I don't really have one. Right? Take Jaugen, Tribute, Flan. That doesn't work. I, if I tribute my Maxi to take the Jaugen, I think what I have to do... Tribute Maxi. Try to take. If I take Jaugen. Yeah. The problem with Jaugen is that it's a random discard. Okay. And now I don't have a play because my hand is so awful. Like, I normal summon Poplar doesn't get me there, because I've already used original. Normal summon Oak doesn't get me there, because I don't have a target for it. And I can't send anything. It's very annoying. That was really unfortunate. Drawing Flamberge, Oak, and multiple Dive Stars is definitely not great. That could have been so easy. With one Engage, or one Thrust, or one Snake Eye Ash. Yeah, of course, they have a way to get back the Branded Fusion. Why would they not? Thoughts on Diabell start here with Impulse to Blind Second? I mean, Impulse could be a good card in any Blind Second deck, even here. Theoretically. I just don't like that you have to play the... the Fire Attacker for it. I hate drawing the Fire Attacker. Stealing Sanctifier was a better play or setting the spell before triggering Jaugen. Both of those plays don't really make sense. You can't target J Sanctifier with enemy controller and setting a Wanted doesn't do anything since I've already used a Wanted. What, what's the point of setting Wanted to like save it from the Jaugen discard? The only reason to set Wanted 
Uh, the only reason the set wanted is to uh, try and discard the poplar, yeah. Okay, this is going to get really ugly. I don't think we can live this turn unless they misplay. Putting the Jaugen in attack and then attack with Poplar. Uh, theoretically, that does work. Yeah, maybe. Talents is non-target. Yeah, but not drawing with Talents there. The deck that we're playing needs to draw with Talents there. Only because we didn't draw what we needed doesn't mean that it was wrong to draw. Like, uh, we, we drew freaking two useless cards with, with Pot of Greed. That doesn't mean that Pot of Greed was bad there. Like, if we draw any live spell card there, we push through their board super easily, is what you need to realize. Weakest 60 card branded opener. I don't think their opener. I don't think their opener was the problem. They drew a good hand, but I don't think that was the issue. I think the issue was more that our hand just kind of sucked. It, it, it happens. It's not the end of the world. It was just not a great hand that we had, which is whatever. It happens. It's okay. Uh, yeah, we die anyways. It's okay. The issue is not the hand, it's the deck. So I know you're trolling, but I, I also am aware that we're not playing the best deck in the game right now. I just don't... I, I, I'm kind of past the point where I always try to play the best deck only. Sometimes I'm okay with just playing what I like, and then I'm okay with losing games because... I'm playing that, right? Okay, this is better. Right? Oh, no. Okay. Well, we're getting phenomenal matchups for Blind Second Snake Eyes, dudes. There's like Sanctifier, Branded, and then Manadium. It's it's glorious. At least their hand doesn't seem to be that broken. So maybe maybe Droplet is good enough here. We'll see. I'm not playing Impulse, but maybe I should. Impulse seems kind of nice. I would also I would also play Phantasme if there were enough mirror matches. I don't think there's a like because branded is a thing, I don't know if I feel comfortable main decking uh Phantasme at the moment. But... Emre, thank you for the sub, appreciate you. So what they got Baron here if they want it. Uh, and then they can still make an Astroloud. Or just cross sheep first. Yeah. Well, but if you cross sheep now, what? Huh? Bring, oh, bring back Visas now. Okay, yeah. Visas into Baron. 
into Astraloud, into Revive with Cross Sheep. They can still bring back Bobble Hat. So this is Appaloosa Baron, right? Unless they got some other tricks up their sleeves. It's just Appaloosa Baron. Yeah, we can beat that. Depending on their hand, obviously, but... Uh, Mountain Man, thank you for the eight months. I... On the one hand, I agree with you. Unchained being meta for Worlds would be really cool. On the other hand, unless they ban Max C until Worlds, I have my doubts that Unchained would be a relevant pick at highest competitive level. Like, unironically, I, I hate to keep... I hate, I hate that I have to keep saying this whenever stuff like this happens. I hate referring to, like, Max C every single time, but it is just that big of a deal for these kind of decks. Why is Unchained bad into Max C? Because it's a mid rangey deck. Which means that it's. It does a lot of summons for not that much result. Uh, I forgot. Did I cut one Flamberge? Is this my last Flamberge? Or. It's only. Okay, so I've drawn my one of Flamberge both times so far, is what you're saying. Cool. Uh, we can definitely send the Ash. I don't know if- I mean, do we want to send the Flamberish? Um... If I send it now, I can't revive with it. Then I can do it later if I bring it back with Promethean. I think it's okay. This... And this. I think I need to keep the one on the field. Dude, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna play tier limits. If I want to play a lot of traps, I'm gonna play the Paleo deck. Okay, so... Thrust... Into Talents or Thrust into Engage is the question. Uh, if I Thrust into Engage, I have to clear out my Monster turns first. I don't think I want to do that i think it's just i think it's as simple as thrust for talents look at their hand and then i can kill them because they've got something right they've got something in their hand but i don't think we need extra resources I, I think we really only just need to know what if they have anything because they've gotten they have a response. Why do, I, I I don't know what it would be. Oh, it's Ash. Yeah, we we just get rid of Ash. Yeah, okay. All oh, right, the bear they are asked for barons all the time. Yeah, right, true. But anyways, okay, cool. Uh, I wonder why they normal summoned Max C. Why didn't they normal summon? Ash. Oh, because they wanted to... Oh, if I had Maxi, they wanted to be able to Ash it. That, that actually does make sense. Okay. Uh, stats FR. Thank you for the Prime. And Odyssey. Thank you for the first time Prime as well. Appreciate that. Thank you.
Can I not draw Flambert or Oak? Like one game? Thank you. Okay, pitch the lovely for Stovey. Okay. All right. Okay. Not too mad about the maxi. All right. More mad about that maxi, particularly. Honestly, that's a more annoying maxi. I'll say that much. Okay, uh, we're gonna have to take this one slow. I don't think I can push into this because, I mean, I don't think I can kill them. They have two back row, one of them is big welcome. If I play into this maxi, they're gonna draw a ton of cards, so... We can set up the field spell. That's going to make the Poplar bigger than the Ariana. So we can force something in the battle phase. Uh, I'm thinking about... Uh, I'll place Flamberge. If I go to the battle phase now and attack the Ariana, if they activate Big Welcome, what I could do is I could chain Enemy Controller to take the Ariana, and then they have nothing to bounce with the Big Welcome, so they can't do any lovely stuff. Hmm. See what they do. Let's see if they even wanna. They do. Okay. Um, I think I do maxi. And now if I enemy take the Ariana. Enemy. Take the Ariana. Give me that. Now they summon silver. Yeah, but that's better for me than if they summon um, lovely. And if they want to resummon it this turn, I get another draw from my maxi. And I will summon Flamberge here. They will get a draw from it, but I will summon out my Flamberge because I can do some really um, fun stuff with Flamberge. I can put their lovely into the spell and trap zone and then it's goners. Uh, I don't know if they have a way to get that back. I don't think they do. They have to pop it. They have to pop it with their own field spell, right? Yeah. This maxi that I have is also really good here because it stops them from getting back Stovey. If they want to get back Stovey, I just get another draw. So I don't think they want to do that. You can target Lady. Good thing I'm trying to target Lovely in the graveyard. Good thing I good thing I was never planning to do that. Isn't that great for me? Ooh, they give me another draw with the Stovey. I don't know if I... I don't know if I agree with that. Well, okay. Maybe I should have chained Wanted. I don't want to draw a Lovely here, but okay. Uh, a Diabell, I mean. Why don't I shut up? Like, ever.
Pitch talents. Okay. Talents and labyrinth. Interesting. Okay. Uh, there's two options right now. I can... Well, I'm going to use this... Flamberge. Okay. Flamberge effect. Target this. I think I'm going to use this on the Ariana, just so they don't get it back. I'm going to use this on the Ariana. I don't want to give it back. And this is a spell card anyways that doesn't do anything on their turn. I'll just I'll just get rid of it. I don't want to link because they draw more cards. Dude, I'm locking their back row, which is very funny. Um... What if they pen summon now? Oh yeah, they can pendulum summon between level 4 and level 8. My bad. Dude, read Maxi! Dude, I just said, can I not draw Oak for one game? There it is. I shouldn't have said that. Want to draw? I could, but I knew they had this card in the hand, and I wanted to keep this card to stop them from chaining to it. Like, if they activate a trap card now, I can chain my wanted to chain block the, the lovely, uh, the lady. And that's why I wanted to, uh... Because I don't want, I don't really want to use this Flamberge, actually. I want to keep those guys in the back row. I think that's an interesting way to to win this match. I don't care about this at all. This Ash Blossom is bad. Sure. I can summon my own Poplar, yeah. I mean, as a chain block, that's fine. Yeah. I was just gonna I was gonna do that with the temple at some point, but I guess yeah, I can just do it with the Flamberge too. Do I need to prevent this? I'm not sure if I do. I feel like I don't. Big welcome again. Okay. They can bounce my Flamberge, but whatever. Chain. I came first at my locals tonight with Paleo Sprite. Dude, that sounds so fun. I wish I had locals close by. I would play I would play funky decks like that all the time. Uh, Neku Arius, thank you for the eight months. Appreciate that. Thank you. Do you live in a cuff? Yeah, basically. Uh, no, they can stay there. I would play Runic Stun if I had locals. Oh, yeah, I think I, I know you would. I know you would. Okay, Chaos Angel, what are you trying to banish? The field spell. I kind of care about my field spell. At the same time, do I really? Okay. 
I do like my field spell. I will I will keep it. Uh and I will send What do I send? I think I ash? I have oak. I think I send ash. No, I'll definitely keep my witch. The witch is a good option to get the flamberge into the graveyard. This also, like, the reason why I think this is fine is because it also gets a lot of pressure off of me. Because now the poplar, not guaranteed, but likely is able to just be bigger than everything they can do. So they just, I don't think I take damage here. Unless they invest, like, more important cards. Um, otherwise, if I just let the temple be banished, my poplar is vibing with 700 attack. Yeah, I mean, now they link off the freaking Chaos Angel. That's worth. We declare worth for that one. Does Chaos Angel trigger on special summon? Oh, it does. Okay, sure. Oh, but they bring back Lady. Sure. They have another Ash. That, I mean, the last card in hand has to be freaking Maxi. What? They must not be aware that they can use Chaos Angel again. They must not know. Uh, just put this. Oh no, in hand is big welcome, right? So big welcome. Okay. Or. I'm doing this first because at the moment I have no way of chain blocking this lady. That's fine. I have no way of chain blocking this lady. Uh, but if I normal summon, I can chain enemy uh, if they use the big welcome. Now I can also chain enemy to change it to defense. But while they only had the set, while they had two set cards, had I just activated wanted in the graveyard and they chain a trap, I can't chain block it. So I was scared of that. Um, and this called by on the poplar is like slightly annoying, but not. That bad. Ooh, widow anchor. So if I go original here, no, oak effect summon ash. I can dark this Chaos Angel. I'm just saying. I think that's what I want to do. Uh, summon Ash. Ash effect. I don't think I need this original. I'll probably... I'll search Kurikara and then I'll Diabell Star pitch the original. Uh, Ganova, thank you for the seven months. Appreciate you. Do you collect cards? I do collect a little bit, but mostly not for collection purposes. I, 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 uh, most of the cards I have are for playing, not really because I want to collect them. So maybe the answer is no. Maybe I, I just own the cards I want to play, but I guess that's also a collection. I don't know. Does that count as collecting? I have no idea. Um, I can't target this right now. That's the thing. I can't target this at the moment because I have a set card still.
How do you send the Flamberge now? Uh, I was going to summon it later. I was going to go Promethean, bring back Snake Eye Ash, and then summon it from hand. Something like that. Something along those lines. But it is... Or Phoenix, yeah. Nightmare Phoenix is also another way that I could do. I, I, I already know I've won this game. I'm kind of just playing it to see if I can clog their entire back row, if that makes sense. I just want to, I just want to kind of like, you know. <laughs> I'm not really playing for, you know, that anymore. Uh... Tribute, Chaos Angel, try and take this. Ah, come on. For the screenshot? No, I was very close. We were going to use Subversion and Flamberge this turn to put two more, so they would have been four in the back row. And then we just had to do one more, but okay. All right, they saw the writing on the wall. It's a, I'm, I'm noticing it's a little dangerous to go blind second with this deck in Master Duel because like if they have maxi, you kind of get bopped. If they make a board and have maxi, that's kind of unbeatable. But I mean, it's more fun though. Wait, they sent me first. Okay, that's a problem. Peppela, yeah. Sounds kind of good, though. But... I'm a little scared. I'm just going to do some stuff, but... I'm a little bit terrified. I just want you to know that. Numeron? I haven't seen Numeron in this game in forever. Like, unironically, that hasn't really been a thing. Uh, let's draw two. Right. Maybe I should have done this one first because I now drew I drew this one, but it's okay. I'll just grab another wanted. Not too bad. We are not playing around in the Biru properly, by the way, but they won't have it. Can you activate Wanted the same turn you... No, you can't. Nip isn't real. I mean, we are way past five summons. They don't have a response window, so I think I think it might actually not be real.
Uh, Linko Rebo. Here. Blazing Kagari is funny. I mean, the, the plan is not to go first, so it's whatever, dude. Uh, well, we haven't normal summon yet, so we make... Did I not put... Oh, I put IP Masquerade. Okay, I just didn't see it. Um... Uh, yeah, let's go... Can I do a Selene line somehow? Selene into Appaloosa first? And then still Promethean? Celine takes three, brings back three. Apo. I still can. Technically. Uh, we would still do this first. Right. Here. Here. Bring back two. Is it enough spells? Yeah. Uh, so if I make Selene with Magician Souls and Masquerade Bring back Apo. Should work. Two here. This. the biggest downside of using Selene that you have to manually remove all the counters one by one. It's very annoying. It's just a two mat Apple, but it's all right. In order to link off the Promethean and keep the Flamberge around, uh, I can just normal summon. The only question is, what do I even link into with this IP Mascarena? I can't even make Azalea right now. Maybe I should just play Nightmare Unicorn. I wouldn't have a card in hand now, but I could get one. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of expected, to be fair, to lose. I think it's not that unlikely to lose to a blind... Like, if they blind second and we blind second and they win the coin flip, they are at a big advantage. I don't know what they're playing, but blind second against blind second is always kind of a disaster. Because I don't even have a way to prevent that. I don't play any Omni Negates in this version.
not even that bad, honestly. <laughs> Evenly unicorn Fenrir. Easy as that. Sure. Wait, you have birth too? Or why are you searching a unicorn? Oh no, you just follow up. Follow up. Okay, okay. Ah! Say what? Girsu? Uh oh. What was that? World armor? It has no effect in the graveyard. Is it a lib angle? I think it is. Lib, yeah. Okay, World Legacy Succession into that. And on the field, add a World Legacy card from deck to your hand. Secret. Oh, is Secret the annoying one? Oh yeah, it is. Oh, that's the one that negates like the shit in the same column as a Mech Knight. I don't know what the... I mean, this is also a level 7. Are they locked into anything? I don't think they are. I think they're completely like... they. I, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure they can do whatever they want still. Nightmare you... Okay, they're not going to go for any sort of... Rank 7s. Maybe... Axis Code to clear the board? This card in the Unicorn. Interesting. It's kind of scary. Goodbye, Promethean Princess. Until next turn. Okay, shuffle back, shuffle back. Sure. It is crazy. <laughs> that's funny. No matter what happens, uh, that's also the worst possible thing you could have done. Because you don't even get a monster from that. I guess this triggers Fenrir, but... Fine. <laughs> Kagari is funny. Alright, Linkaribo banished face down is a little annoying, but it's whatever. Probably worth it. We can send this, I mean, if we get to send this Flambers for Die Star, like, it's just... You're gonna Axis Coat this Flambers, you're this angry at it. Okay, understandable. Okay, so this is slightly annoying, I think. B 
because we can dodge imperm yeah but the card doesn't work like that give me a second i don't think the card works like that so this card says when this card is activated target a level five or higher monster in your graveyard special summon it negate any monster effect opponent's monster effect that activates in the same column it doesn't matter where the the thing is at resolution it only matters where it was when it was activated so if i chain econ the monster is gone but it was still activated in that zone it still counts like that so if i just special die a bell star now um It still doesn't work. If you steal the mech knight, it won't negate. Oh, wait. That might be true. That might be facts. But I can't do that. Because it's not there yet. Oh, yeah. that In my head, I've already gone through this possibility. I have already done this. But then uh, what you said somehow made sense to me. And I was like, wait, yeah, no, that, yeah, no, that's not how it works. Uh, I can't prevent that, yeah. I don't know why I set in the same column as the axis code. I am not, that is not ideal. Do I still have dark? I do have dark. Ah, nib. Was that five? Monka Christ. I think it was. It's okay, though. Uh, I would like to put this Fenrir somewhere. Here. Dude, I'm timing out. If they nib me now, I might not be able to resolve everything. Oh my god. Why are you even Nibiruing here? It's not even good. Monka speed. No, go, 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 go. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> what? <laughs> Where did that come from? What the hell? Huh? 
<laughs> what is that, dude? What is that thing? What is that thing? I don't understand. Everything is there. Uh, Flipper, thank you for the eight months. Appreciate that. Also, uh, Gralic Nate, thank you for the prime and what to say. Thank you for the 17 months. Appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. This is, uh, this is very weird. This is one of those instances where the, the thing is not, it's not more than the sum of its parts, you know? You know what? I could just enemy this and win the game instantly, but okay, never mind. I was going to say, I'm going to let you search with that dark because I want to see what you're cooking, but sure. You're cooking a surrender. Sick. Um, yeah, I, I can't explain this. I cannot explain this. Show deck. Uh, my bad. Too late. Dude, why am I winning all these coin flips? Also, did we just win a game after getting even lead for like eight cards? Maybe we should talk about that more. Maybe that is something we should have talked about. You know? Shimmer Scanner, thank you for the 17. Good day to you. To be fair, opponent was playing five archetypes with no synergy together. Yeah. Yeah. Nice hand. Uh, it's not nice yet. It needs a starter card. We have not like... The, the, it's a lot of good cards. But actually, if they just don't do anything, uh, we can't activate a single one of these cards. So... I shouldn't have told them that. <laughs> okay, cool. Thumbs up. <laughs> uh, why not main phase? Anyways. Uh... I don't think it's worth thrusting to set a spell. Oh no, it's a tier limit gambler, dude. We're, we're so lost. If there's one thing I've learned about tier limit gamblers is they never hit big un until they get paired against me. They always win against me. They, they're feeling so smart right now as well because they think they did the right thing by just passing when it's just like not actually that good against my deck to just pass. It was just this specific hand. Four one ofs by the way, in my hand. And they're going to gamba me to death. Yep, Havnus. Yep, Havnus. Is it a Gamba if you win 100% of the time? Uh, no, then it wouldn't be a Gamba. Which is why I'm calling it a Gamba, because they're not always winning. They're only winning against me. All we have is a Sphere Karibo, if you really think about it. Yeah, I'd rather not think about it. <laughs> okay. Question mark. Do 
What? Bro. <laughs> what? We live if this tier, if this cake close doesn't mill completely crazy. We actually live. Okay, it hits snow. That's a little messed up. But it hit only snow. So I don't think that's game yet. Which one do I switch? Does it matter? I guess I'll pitch this. I guess I'll use this one. Put this one to defense. Put this one. Roll cast lower defense, yeah, but like, uh, they can theoretically, if they have like an, for some reason, another poly, they could have polyed away the, the rule close can return, the Kaleido heart can't be used as fusion material, so I, that's why, what I was thinking. All right. Please do something. That is not what I meant. Oh yeah, Meta Noise this game. Yeah, yeah. What other field spell do you have? Huh? Cast your field spell? Oh god. If I die. To normal summon Emerald Tortoise? Tear Cash is also in the graveyard, Chatter. Oh, I also just lose Snow is already enough because of the field spell boost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Snow is enough if they see it.
Man! Why? Check the last deck? I keep, I keep forgetting. I mean, it was just bad. What, what do you want me to check? It was just like a bad... Go I, can I stop winning every single coin flip? Except against the blind second deck? This is the first time we have engage. Like game number eight or something like that. And we're probably being a rice hearted. Could be the snake eye deck. Yo. Uh, that's interesting. Do they end on a rice heart or not? No? Okay. Hmm. Draco Predator, thank you for the 19 months. Also, Wine195, thank you for the 8 months. Appreciate the long time support, everyone. Thank you, thank you. Birth bat yeah, the it's the it's actually the I I was waiting for some snake eye matchups with this deck because it's actually quite fun going second into snake eyes with the stri striker cards. It's actually a, quite the, a good game usually. I, I mean in Master Duel, if they drop Maxi on you, it wouldn't be. But like in general, it's like a lot of fun. Like the unicorn and the and the birth are gonna be a problem here though. Oh yeah, do that at the very end when Nibiru still fucks you. Sure, very smart. Uh, well, have they, is this how they're supposed to do this? Okay, I'm pretty sure it's not, but okay. All right, well, I'm actually most concerned about the Kashira birth right now. That's the thing that I'm literally the most concerned about at the moment. Everything else I feel like is okay. We've got Shark Cannon for the Princess, or we can use it as an extender. But we've got three striker cards against the Kashira birth, so that's a problem. Oh, it's it's a very good hand. It's a very good hand, and it would be really good if they didn't have birth. Oh man, that's such a shame.
Hm. Ach ja. I don't have Afterburner. Okay, they have Ash. Two. Yeah. Corn fake, thank you for the eight months. I mean, look, I'm not beating that. Plus Ash, plus Maxi. I'm not beating that. That's not happening. That's a Master Duel certified moment. Despise, thank you for the 16. Appreciate you guys. Thank you, thank you. Dude! I'm, I'm swapping decks, dude. I'm swapping decks. I, I can't take it. I'm winning every single coin flip and I'm playing a blind second deck. It's too frustrating. It's too frustrating for me. Uh, a big sip. Thank you for the prime. Appreciate that. Okay. Monka S. Against so much back row, it would be kind of nice to get the field spell. Just to like grind better, because I doubt that I can kill them this turn. Let's grab the field spell. It's lab. I mean, even if it is lab, then like having the field spell is nice, because if they summon stuff, then I get to summon my stuff. And in the long run, it's pretty good. Oh, they have cosmic. Sure. I suppose. What deck plays Cosmic? Bricked Snake Eyes? I mean, it could be. Uh, good afternoon, Aluber92. Appreciate you. How are we doing today? I have Snake Eye Ash. Oh no, music is gone. It was just the break between the two songs. Don't worry about it. Uh... I kind of just want to... I don't think we can win this turn. I'll just grab a Snake Eye Ash for follow-up. Sick. If you added Poplar, could you special it? Yeah, I could have. But I don't think it's worth committing that much. I don't need to win this turn. Their hand clearly isn't that sick. And we've got a lot of good defensive cards right now. 
So I'm not too worried about it. Um, I would normally go into some sort of SP line here, but I think I'm just going to go Flamberge. SP line? Well, in the TCG, that is. Oh, they had Imperm? Oh, okay. I was worried they would Imperm my Diabell Star, but sure. If you want to give me, like, 12 cards instead, that's also fine by me. I don't mind that. Uh, enemy is pretty nasty here. We can enemy tribute Flamberge, which puts Flamberge into the grave, revive two, and we can also, if we activate the enemy, we can chain uh, Widow Anchor to it. Uh, okay. They want to search. Yeah, okay. I mean, let him search. <laughs> Peg Sovan, thank you for the 16 months. Appreciate that. Thank you. This is scary, is it? I don't know. This one search can't possibly play through enemy maxi video anchor, right? No way. I refuse to believe it's that scary. Without a normal summon? No shot. Okay, fiendish golem. Sick. Very scary. That was very, very scary. Indeed. All right, Diabelsar one, Flamberge two. Okay, they held their cult by the grave. That's smart. It's I think it's a little bit too late and their hand is a little bit too bad for this to matter, but uh, I respect the effort. It's my only Flamberge too, so this is technically a pretty powerful play, but unfortunately they just don't have anything else really. Uh, let's grab original. They tried. Yeah, their hand apparently just didn't really do anything, so it's kind of like... I don't think they had the option to do anything there. <laughs> Mr. Gibba, thank you for these 18 months. No archetype in the world deserves a circular. If your archetype needs a circular to be good, your archetype just... You know, your archetype's lost. It's Jover for your archetype. One, two, three. If I go Oak and Revive, that does play into Nibiru. I mean, we have Thrust. It's not that big of a deal. You could also attack. I could also just attack. Yeah, I don't know what the back row could be. But that's what we're going to do next. You know, attacking. I don't know what we're fearing. I, it's it's resonators. It is Nibiru. That's funny. Okay, cross up. Okay, so the last card is Fiendish Golem. What does Fiendish Golem do? Target a monster, banish it. 
Okay. Easy. Uh, so did you wanted to see my this deck? Sure, I can show you this deck. Uh, it's I don't think it's the best version of Snake Eye, but it's definitely more fun to me personally than the other ones. But it's uh, I I it's pro you're probably better off, especially if you want to play the Duelist Cup to just play like hand traps and stuff like that. I think this one's more fun. Because it has Ray, it doesn't even have Ray. The going second monstrosity. Uh, which one was that? This one. You know, it's it's just extra funny that they play one Ray, one, and they drew it in that moment. It was just that one card that was necessary, like, to make it absolute content, right? Like. <laughs> Can we play that? Please no. <laughs> it's just so bad, isn't it? Actually, I don't have mind control. I, I actually don't have mind control and I don't want to craft mind control right now. Please do it. I'll do one game because you asked so nicely. Hold up. I'll do one game with it. Uh, where is it? Oops. Uh, oh. I didn't even ask for subs, man. Such a huge mistake, dude. Just minus for no reason. Okay, sure. Uh, just batch generate, you fiend? I don't know. I never do that for, for some reason. Aha. You should improve it. I mean, 
I'm gonna improve it after this game. You can watch me improve it after this game. Remind me to improve the deck after the game. This hand is not even that bad. Their hand is completely cracked, though. Kid, why, are, why do people keep doing this? They discarded rollback, by the way. Their hand is completely absurd. Mill Ku Clock. All right. Dude, three cards. It's not even worth the evenly match, dude. Oh, hello. Dude, I'm not going for evenly matched. I'm discarding evenly for super poly every day of the week here. Right? Like, what is it? Like, the, the problem is, however I sequence this, it's, it's, it's fucking bad. Like, if I start with unicorn, my engage is dead. If I start with engage, my unicorn, I'm... Uh, eh? What am I supposed to do? Why is my super poly not activatable? It's only much. Oh my god. Oh my god. There's no Garura. There's no Garura. How? Oh my. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, they didn't do anything. Oh, wait. Oh, there. Streamer throwing? I'm not throwing! Not my fault. Dude, imagine Super Polly in response to the big welcome labyrinth, man. Oh, ho, ho. Imagine Super Polly in response to the big welcome. Oh my god, it's so criminal, man. It's so cringe. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> That's actually the best one. Oh. Chain Lady. No, okay. Okay, I have a question. Now, fucking what? Was there theosis? Who knows? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> uh, wait, what link two do I have? Dark? Uh, dark into what link three do I have? Okay. Ray. Or the drones. 
No theosis? Insane. Glorious. Watch this gambit, chat. Watch this gambit. Hold up. Wait, you're gonna bounce your own? That's not even good. Okay, sure. That's not even good. That I don't. I don't even need it. Okay. Bounce your lovely back to the hand. Nice. Sick. Okay. Go for Stormy Torben. Please shuffle in my Hornet drones. Please shuffle in my Hornet drones. Please shuffle in my Hornet drones. Please shuffle in my Hornet... Thank you. You know, you know what the worst fucking thing is about this entire game? The most cursed shit is that unironically, no matter how bad this main deck is, if there was a Garura in the extra deck, we could have won this game. But they just put Super Poly with one target. There's also just one super poly. Oh, so that's why there's only one target. Yeah, my bad. If you only play one super poly, why would you play two targets? Okay, we're going to go improve this deck. We're going to make it a lot better. Sick. Well done. Okay, cool. Um, Steru, thank you for the 18 months. Appreciate you. Let's play some Vanquish Soul and then let's do the 24. Let's do the tier list after. We need to do the tier list still, and we need some time for the 
for the 2014 recap as well. Tearless Tuesday? Yeah, today is actually Tearless Tuesday. But we don't tell the YouTube frogs about that. Okay, I feel right at home again. Vanquish Soul Hand, no raisin. Sick. That's how I remember it. Were we still racing Farfa this week? I want to, but Farfa keeps dodging. But the, the current plan is to do it tomorrow. Uh, Yarrow, thank you for the 18 months. Appreciate that. Oh, that doesn't start a chain. I didn't know that. Okay, cool. Whatever. As long as the maxi resolves, I don't think it really matters when we drop it. Wait, is this Trisugda? You really you do you start with Trisugda? No shot. Um Let's crow first. See if they called by that shit. Are we still locked? Uh, also, yeah, they're locked. There's no... Oh, that's the other effect. Oh, my bad. Okay. This card is better than I thought it was. This is annoying. This is very annoying. I mean, I have to chain it. The problem now is, though, they just take my stake and then... Shit. This did not go the way I wanted it to go. Goodbye, stake your soul. Dude, if I just don't... I mean, maybe they have Ash and that's why they... Wait, no. Eh, we'll see. Dude, monster, please. I guess. I guess I got what I asked for. Dude, you didn't have... Dude, Monadium players, dude. This time we're going to draw a raisin. I can feel it. I can feel it. Yeah, I felt it. I felt it. Droll Prage, it's way more likely to, that you're baiting like a. Um. An Ash with the Rota than actually getting rolled. Play Snake Eyes, please. We already played Snake Eyes. I don't want to play Snake Eyes for the entire stream. Understandable. Uh, 
uh smg incredible thank you for the 12 months i mean this maxi is good for them but it's still like my deck is still gonna do a whole lot or i mean considering we're under maxi like this is really good still Uh, Arcticide, thank you. Appreciate that. Welcome back. Please pay Paleo. Uh, <laughs> we could play one Paleo game if you want. That's You have to know that that's like a 30-minute investment, though, is what you need to understand. Have you seen Tenpai in the OCG? I have seen it. I have seen I think it's a good deck. The problem with Tenpai is that as soon as it becomes a meta deck uh, and people are aware of it, I think there's a there's very easy ways to counter it. Dude, Borger, draw Borger two times in a row. Crazy. Um, and we're seeing this trend in the OCG at the moment where... Um, the deck was really popular for one metagame report, and then the next the the next couple things after it just didn't do anything anymore, or like a uh, way less because people started doing stuff that was good against it, like siding cards for it and stuff like that. And then suddenly the deck was just almost unplayable. I feel like is what would happen with a deck like that very easily. Grip on Rider. Sure. Discard Revolution Synchron. Okay, my opponent is cooking some uh, interesting recipe here. I might have to pop this adventure token right away with this. Yeah. This. 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 All right, well, I have another pop with Caesar Valius, and I have a Druus Worm. But against a deck like that, that could not, that could potentially not be enough. Uh, let's grab the Pantera. I mean, my stuff also can't be destroyed by card effects. Maybe that helps surviving. Like, they can't, like, depending on what they do, like, if it's a Synchro deck, assuming, like, they can't, like, Baron pop something. Reveal a synchro monster in your extra deck. Choose one of the synchro materials mentioned and add it to your hand or special from deck or grave. Okay, that's pretty good. That just specials out Jet Synchron? Um... Do I need to do something about this now? I don't think so. Axel Stardust. I can pop it here. They can't chain. Oh, they use that effect of it. Okay. 
I don't know how to interact with this deck the best way. I, I, especially since I don't really have great ways to do it. Is Jet one effect per Yeah, you can't use both effects. Um... Search a junk monster. I pop the Axel here. I think so. The thing is, if I let this go, right? If I let this go, they can also bring back the uh, the Revolution Synchron and just make like a Baron, like level 9 Synchro into Baron anyways to stop my Caesar. Oh, I didn't use Jialong. Okay, anyways. Okay, yeah. Sweet. I don't know what that was, but we take it. We take those. All right, let's do... <laughs> Let's do one paleo game. Uh... <laughs> Let's do one paleo game. I wanted to swap the torrentials for needle ceilings. And then we'll do the tier list after. Sound like a deal? Phenomenal. I don't know if we need prosperity. I don't think we do. Um... Boom. Wonderful. Get your blankies out? Yeah, blankies ready. Wonderful. Hand is broken. We basically won the game already. Oh no, not the dot scaper, dude. Okay. Sure. Sure. So Ice Dragon's Prison technically goes really hard here. Um, I think I have to do it. I think I have to do it. Why not? I was planning on waiting with it because I wanted to have Paleos in the graveyard. Um... But now, I mean, I would have waited if they didn't have Parallel Exceed. Okay. Sure. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> Why did you? Oh god. All right, cool. Um Sweet. <laughs> oh man. Um Oh! Oh! God, yes! Oh my god, they lost the game. Holy crap, what? Double called by is funny. Oh, back jack. Let's go. Ooh. Oh my god, dude, we're gonna have triple reckless greed. Oh my, this is the best day of my life. That was great. Um... Clap. Can this deck OTK? It doesn't need to. I mean, in this position, like, come on, we don't need to. Make them suffer one more turn. That's the spirit. That's the spirit. Now we're talking. Now you get it. Dude, we're gonna draw. Dude, we can... Oh my god. I love transaction rollback, man. Transaction rollback gonna change my life. We can, we can, uh, we can use Reckless Greed so many times, man. Oh, God. Gimme, gimme, where is it? Bam. Bam. Sack. <laughs> God, yes. How many cards left in deck? 39. <laughs> we only just started, man.
Goodbye, Math McGandy. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful, dude. I love this deck. <laughs> All right, cool. That's a... Uh, that is leaving at a high note. That is leaving on a high note. Okay, sick. Cool. We need to do the tier list, though. Let's do the tier list. Deck list. The deck list is on my Discord for this deck. I've, we've been playing this deck a, a good amount already. Uh, for all these kind of stuff, for all this kind of thing, you can go exclamation mark Discord. My deck lists are always on the Discord. Um, and we've also, we've taken some measures over the last couple days to make the Discord a safer space with like uh, two-factor authorization and that kind of stuff. Because uh, we've had some bots in the last couple weeks, so we've solved that issue as well. Thank you for the mods. Thank you to the mods for taking care of that. So now uh, that shouldn't happen at all anymore. Um, but yeah, uh, the, the Discord is a great spot for that. And uh, there's all the deck lists in the channel. is called Current Deck List. It's at the very top somewhere. And you can find the, the Paleo deck there. Okay. Cool. Um, let us proceed by talking about um, the Master Duel meta for this upcoming Duelist Cup and like the meta game in general, I feel like, you know? Uh, would you ever take 60 card Paleo to a tournament? So, <laughs> I, I don't know, to be honest with you, because sometimes, sometimes there is a world where a deck like that could have a solid matchup into some decks, but I mean, I don't know. I don't know. The The problem with that deck specifically that we just played in, in Master Duel is also the fact that like transaction rollback, it's very slow unless your opponent is super bad like that Mathmic player. Um, it's it's a very slow deck. It's, it's not bad, but like it's very slow and it pays half of its life points very often with transaction rollback. Like I've had games where I was vibing on like 187 life points or some, some something like that, right? So like... I don't know if you could do it in a in a timed environment at an at a TCG tournament. But uh for the fun factor at some point maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Eins <laughs> even mentioned, yeah. <laughs> that was not that was that was a, that was not on not on purpose but sure. I guess. <laughs> uh Flow Freeze, thank you for the 16 months. Appreciate that. That's a very long time. Thank you. Okay, chat. Chat, chat, chat. We need to talk about the Master Duel metagame uh, real quick. And uh, I want to give you guys some, some of my opinion on where the decks stand in the current metagame. And I have prepared a little bit of a tier list. Uh, no one tell the YouTube frogs that it's actually a, actually a Tuesday. So it's actually tier list Tuesday. Uh, no one tell them about that. Uh, we're we have to like up the, upload this on a Wednesday so that it's not actually a tier list Tuesday or tier list Thursday. Um, but yeah. I just want to give you guys some input and some thoughts on where decks stand in the current Master Duel format. Um, with obviously with regards to the upcoming Duelist Cup, but also just in general, right? Whether you want to try hard in the Duelist Cup or whether you just want to play some Master Duel ranked or tournaments or whatever. We're going to talk about different aspects of these decks and where they can perform and where they can't. I haven't labeled these tiers yet. Uh, I mean, I, I feel like we just we can just leave it like this. S, A, B, C, D, just, you know, best at the top. And then we will explain why the others go lower um, and stuff like that, right? So let, let's begin. Uh, let's go through these one by one, and I'll just tell you guys what I think of these decks uh, one by one. Super Heavy Samurai, to me personally, is an interesting phenomenon in Master Duel, because when the deck came out, it felt like it was everywhere, and kind of for good reason. Um, recently, the deck isn't really seeing that much play anymore. I feel like it's just... I mean, it hasn't really been hit. Let's say that right off the bat. Soul, what did they do? Soul Piercer to two? That didn't really matter. Um, I think the deck is still strong. I think the reason why people are not really playing it as much, or maybe that's just my experience. I don't really see it that much. I've been hanging out in 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 Master Rank, some, and like I I don't even remember the last time I've played against Super Heavy Samurai. It must have been like weeks ago, like one or two weeks. Um, 
but the deck isn't bad um by no means i think the reason people aren't really playing it is because they find it boring and it's it's a deck that to be honest it doesn't really give that much control to the player that's playing it because you're limited to only really playing monsters uh you can't really play enough outs to maxi and so on and so forth so it's really just at the you're at the mercy of variance with this deck pretty much um but i still think it is good and especially with the um with the duelist cup coming up i could see people queuing with this deck a couple times simply because you know if you notice oh no one's playing droll right now um people are maybe people are gonna play nibiru a lot and this deck has some pretty good lines against nibiru and all that kind of stuff and um i think it's a good deck to have in your repertoire going into the dc cup right because no one is only playing or most of the time you're not going to be playing only one deck in the tournament you're going to switch it up i think it's one of the decks that as much as i personally hate it as much as I personally don't like Super Heavy Samurai, I can't deny the fact that it is a strong and scary deck in Master Duel. It, it is a strong and scary deck in Master Duel. So I think A tier is where it goes. It is not among the very best decks in the game, but it is pretty good still. It is pretty good. Um, and I think people also underestimate the ability under max c to just go Baguska pass. That is something that's really scary for a lot of decks. Um, and you can do that with like two special summons uh which is scary so i think the deck is okay uh we've got flu on the reese which i think is technically i mean it's it's benefiting from the fact that it can play dimension shifter however i think it's just a little bit too inconsistent and i just don't think the math is in your favor if you're playing flu on the reese like um the deck can still win games 100 percent. it's still a solid I mean, it's still a solid, annoying deck, but I don't think it goes higher than C tier for me. It's not complete trash, not the lowest tier here. I I don't think so, but I think it's just it's just too bricky in Master Duel. Like the deck's actually the deck's actually fine in the TCG right now. In case you were wondering, like the deck is actually solid. I think because in TCG three shifter, a lot of three ofs in terms of the consistency cards. Master Duel, just the lack of the consistency cards and the fact that you only have two shifters is just not that great. And if you want to play some anti-meta stuff, there is better things that we're going to be talking about in a little bit still. Um, Mathmec. Unfortunately, I have to put Mathmec in A tier because for some reason uh, they do not address this deck in the right way. Uh, you guys know I hate this deck. I would love to tell you it's freaking D tier. Never touch it. But it is a good deck in Master Duel at the moment. Triple Circular is still really, really strong. One Diameter, double Paralytic Seed doesn't freaking matter because they, they can search Diameter and they draw Paralytic Seed every single time when they need it anyways. So um, the deck is still very powerful. It can play a lot of hand traps, which makes it solid into Snake Eyes um, because Snake Eyes in Master Duel is going to be very good. But um, without Bonfire, it doesn't play through hand traps nearly as well. So... You know, having a deck that can play all the Imperm, Valor, uh, Nibiru, Im, like all that kind of stuff in the world is, is pretty solid. Um, the, the deck is strong. The deck is is strong. Maybe it's even better than, uh, than Super Heavy Samurai. But they're like close to each other. Like Super Heavy Samurai is, I think, the more powerful deck. Whereas Mathmec is like the more annoying, more versatile in terms of hand traps and all that kind of stuff. Um, but they're both, I, I hate both of these decks with a burning passion. I would love to tell you guys that they're bad, but they're not. So, um, Stun. <laughs> Stun is a deck that I've played on stream for, uh, for the memes because people are forcing me to do it and all that kind of stuff. I don't actually think the deck is that good. However, uh, I can't deny that it's been winning a decent amount for me. I mean, mostly going first. It's kind of funny. I think I think in general, Stun is a pretty bad deck in Master Duel at the moment. But I think specifically for the Duelist Cup, I think there is a world where you can have a Stun deck ready because Stun is one of the decks that can potentially be really, really good at countering specific decks. So if you ever, like, if you ever get into the position in the Duelist Cup and you're grinding and you notice everyone is using the same deck, right everyone is on snake eyes you can build the most like cruel abomination stun deck that just counters snake eyes super hard and then you might have some success with it right i personally haven't had much success with stun in like in master rank because 
In Master Rank, there's still a lot of variety. There's a lot of different decks. You can't really predict what you're going to play against next. Even if there's certain decks that happen more often than others, there's nothing that just happens all the time. So in in their um in their in 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 Master Rank, it's just been like a roulette, you know, like. But, um, I mean, stun is like super annoying sometimes. So yeah, uh, tier limits. Tier limits. I understand why people are playing it. I understand why people are playing tier limits. Um, uh, it is a fun deck to play. To me, this deck feels incredibly gambly at the moment in uh, in Master Duel. I don't like tier limits at all. I don't like playing it. I feel like I need to get incredibly lucky to mill the cards that I, that I need because you have so few tier limit names. No more Ishizu millers, which all of this is a good thing, right? It's a good thing that they banned the Ishizu cards and all that kind of stuff. But I do think that in its current iteration, tier limits is just not great. I do lose to it on stream a fair amount because if they high roll, they high roll, you know, no, no, no way around it. Like if they just have it, they, they, they can still win. The deck is not complete and utter trash. I, I personally don't think it's good though. I, I hate to tell you my personal, my personal statement. I think this deck is relatively close to flu on the Reese because it just like, it, it breaks a fair amount. Maybe it's a little bit better and goes into the bottom of B, but I genuinely don't think this deck is that great. Um, I, I, I just don't think it's that good. Uh, for ranked, by the way, for ranked, almost every single deck that we're talking about today uh, is good enough for ranked. This is from a very competitive perspective. So don't be too like mad if I put one of a deck that you like and you play in ranked and you do fine with it. Uh, if I put it relatively low on this list, all of these decks can perform in rank. None of these decks are completely terrible. And tier limit is the same thing. Tier limit is not terrible. It's just not great. From a competitive perspective, there's almost no reason to play tier limit unless you really like the deck, right? Um, so that's that. Branded is a deck that I think... If it doesn't go into S, honestly, it's it's very top of A. Once again, it's another deck that I personally I don't love it. I think it is I, I think it's fun to play, but I, I don't play it that much and I don't think it's that great. I do think it's good though. Uh and it's got very strong grind game, which is like, you know, whenever they enter the end phase and it feels like they have a main phase three with how many things they're doing. The deck is strong. You have to respect branded. And I think um, I think it's going to be one of the stronger decks for the upcoming Duelist Cup. I'm not going to put it into S tier, I think, because I do think that Snake Eyes is better. And I want to reserve the S tier for what I think is the best choice for the current format. And I think Snake Eye decks are still better than Branded. Um, yeah. Exosister, uh, I think, is a better version of Blue. As a shifter deck, essentially, I think Exosister actually isn't that bad right now. Uh, not a lot of people are playing it, but I think if you really want to play a shifter deck, I think it's down to um, Exosister, Cash Tira, Vanquish Soul. You could play shifter in other decks like Labyrinth if you really wanted to. Um, but I think I think Exosister is okay. I think Exosister gets a solid beat here. Um, it's not the greatest, not the worst. I don't think it's going to see much play at the highest level in the Duelist Cup, but if you just want to, like, if you just want to play a relatively simple deck that can win against Snake Eyes by shifting them sometimes, and, uh, and you can definitely get your points in the Duelist Cup with this deck. Like, just for, like, rewards and some, some stuff like that, just to play until a certain point, Exosister is definitely fine. Uh, it's not like the best deck for like the tryhard uh, people that are going to get try and get the most points and qualify for worlds. I don't think Exosister does that, but it's fine. Like between triple maxi and double shifter, like these kind of decks are just super dangerous even when they go second. So yeah. Um, Labyrinth. Labyrinth, I think is good. Uh, it's a shame that transaction rollback doesn't benefit Labyrinth as much as it could. Because we only have four furniture pieces, right? Two Stovey, two, two Chandeliers. That is super annoying. If we had more, then it'd be, it'd be pretty good to actually compete in the current format. It still can compete. I, I do think it's good. I do think it's a good deck um, that you can also effectively tech against like 
good decks in the format. You know, you can play like one of trap cards that are pretty strong, like Ice Dragon's Prison, or if you face a lot of Snake Eyes, you can play cards like Different Dimension Ground, and then you win going first almost all the time, unless they hand trap you to death. All that kind of stuff. I like the deck. I think it is good out of uh, out of the decks that I've put into A tier. It's probably my favorite to play myself. I don't think it's better than Math Mech or Super Heavy, but I personally like it more. I, I, I personally dig its playstyle way more. I'm a fan of Labyrinth, but I, I don't think it's actually on a competitive scale better than these decks, but it's still pretty good. I, I, it's definitely um, an A tier deck in Master Duel right now. Um, Monadium. Monadium is in a weird spot, I feel like, because it's it's definitely good. It's definitely a good deck. I just don't think it does anything better than other decks right now. Like, if I want to play a super combo-oriented deck that tries to make really strong boards, I feel like you could play Super Heavy or Math Mech and it'd be better. Um, it doesn't play the the mid-range game super well like there's other decks that do that better there's other decks that can fit more non-engine like math mech and super heavy all that kind of stuff i think the deck is good the deck is scary for uh, especially if they go first but i just don't think it does anything better than the decks up here in a tier so i'm putting it in very high b it's it's good it is good but I don't think it's better than the other decks that we have right now like by by comparison i think it goes lower than the a tier decks um yeah pearly pearly i i don't think pearly is very good um it's not terrible either technically it hasn't really happened N not much has happened to pearly it's just that other stuff came out that was better and it just for some reason hasn't gotten e purely noir yet which is a card from Duelist freaking Nexus, which is forever ago. And um, it's really missing that. If it had that, maybe we would be talking. Without that, I, I, I'm going to put it at high C because there's other decks that are better and it, it, it's really missing. It is really missing that card. I, I don't like Pearly at all. I, I don't think it's terrible. I'm not going to put it into D tier, but it's, it's just not, not great. Um, Sword Soul is the definition of a low C tier deck. It's like technically fine, technically all right. Can play a decent amount of non-engine. It's just worse than the other engines by by a lot. Um, it's okay though. Like in order to get your gems or to climb a little bit in ranked, it's completely fine. Uh, I'm not gonna throw it in D. I don't think I'm gonna throw anything in D tier because like like I said, nothing here is absolutely terrible. Um, but Sword Soul probably the worst deck on this list overall alongside flu and uh and pearly they're like yeah okay pearly is a lot lower than that maybe it is honestly the problem is here i haven't played pearly in a in a decent amount of time and i haven't played against pearly very often either so i have a hard time exactly evaluating pearly it, it's it's possible it's possible that there is small differences between inside the individual tiers it's it's not a set in stone thing you know like uh it's just a rough evaluation i think of the decks that i haven't played in a long time um cash tira i think is is very solid um nothing crazy around the power level of exo sister i would say it's just that kind of deck where you rely on shifter and maxi to do a lot of work um i do think that cash tira unicorn is a pretty good card in master duel right now because most of the snake eye decks have a very vulnerable extra deck we're gonna talk about that in a second when we take a look at the Cash Tira Snake Eye version, um, because Unicorn is very annoying. The problem is that if you play Cash Tira, like I think Cash Tira works very well in Master Duel right now as a sort of hybrid engine that you can throw in other decks. Like I'm seeing a decent amount of decks playing like Unicorn, Fenrir, Birth, Wraith Soth, right? That kind of package I think is pretty strong. Because it, it plays around Max C because you can start your turn with those cards. You don't have, you you know, like a lot of Snake Eye decks are doing that. You know, start with Unicorn. And then if you get Hand Trap later or Max Seed later, you can rip apart their extra deck and, and all that kind of good stuff, right? I think that that's a strategy that's pretty potent. Relying only on the Cash Tira plays, I think, is a little bit weird because um, 
Uh, I think in this Duelist Cup, Nibiru is going to be relatively popular. Uh, and in general, in ranked, people are playing Nibiru at the moment because it's quite effective against Snake Eyes, depending how well your opponent plays around it. So if you're playing Cash Tira, you have to basically go for the Arise Heart pass every time, which means you are relatively vulnerable to certain cards, depending on what kind of non-engine people play, right? Like, you know, if they draw an Imperm, that's kind of bad for you. If they have a talent, it's pretty bad for you. The deck is good. Um, but I don't think it is that sick. Maybe it's better than Stun. Probably here is where I would feel comfortable putting Cash Tira. Um, my beloved Runic decks. Uh, I've only put Naturia Runic here as kind of like a, an overall representation of Runic. I, I don't want to talk about five different Runic versions at the moment. Um, let me tell you, competitively speaking, there's no reason to play it. There's no reason to play runic decks from a competitive standpoint. Um, I play them because they're fun to me personally. You know, that's going to comments are going to be full of uh, hate for runic again, but it's fine. It's whatever you do. You uh, I like them. I play them because I like them. But I don't think if I was if I was trying this duelist cup, I would not play like if I was try harding to try and qualify for worlds in this duelist cup, I would not play a single game of runic. Um, and if I wouldn't play a single game of Runic, the deck has to be in a pretty dire spot. Like, I don't think it's worse than, like, here. I would put it right around here in comparison to these other decks. Uh, in terms of its competitive viability, Runic decks, I think they're, they're, they're like, absolutely playable. I can climb ranked with them, um, but they are not the great. It's definitely better than tier. You guys saying Copium right now, you guys are crazy. You guys are crazy thinking Tier Limits is better than Runic decks right now. I'll, I'll just tell, I'll tell you that much. I'll tell you that much. That, that's crazy. That's a crazy thing to say. Uh, anyways. Vancrusol. Vancrusol, I think, could be a sleeper pick for this, for this upcoming Duelist Cup. I actually am a pretty big fan of Vancrusol at the moment. The deck can be teched very well against the top decks in the metagame. Like, you can play... Um, you can play Shifter if you want to. You can play Crow, Bell, which have the attributes that you need, and they are pretty efficient, actually, if you pair them with other hand traps against these top decks. Like, Bell, really good against Lab, pretty good against Mathmic, has applications against Super Heavy, very good against Branded, uh, good against Snake Eye as well. The same is true for Crow. Um, I, I actually think Vankersol has the potential to be even better than this up here. Uh, I like it a lot. You just have to find... You, I think you have to find the right balance between consistency and hand traps, right? Um, I think the deck is solid. Are we taking into account how fast or slow games are in the Duelist Cup climb? A little bit. A little bit. But I think in past iterations, I think I have over overestimated the importance of that. Right, like there was, there was uh, times where I said I don't think purely is that great for the Duelist Cup because it's relatively slow, and then purely ended up being very good for the Duelist Cup. Still, um, I think speed is important for when you do the climb. At the same time, your win rate is also really important. So if you find a deck that just works well for you, um, even if it is a little bit slower, I think that's still a good choice for the Duelist Cup. Um, I think Vanquish Soul is a pretty strong deck. I like it a decent amount. And um, I think you can tech really well. Like, if you see a lot of Snake Eyes, you can play cards like Retaliating C, Shifter, um, DD Crow, Bell. I think the deck is very versatile. I think the deck is very good. And as long as you can build the deck in a consistent fashion to make sure you have Raisin often enough, I think the deck is quite strong. I like it. Um, and here we have the last two. I think it's going to be to no one's surprise. I think Snake Eye decks share the top position in the format. Um, we don't have to talk about it for too long, um, but the reason I wanted to include both of these is because I think the two, two, the two versions are quite interesting. Like, on the one hand, you have pure Snake Eyes, which I think is the deck to beat in, in Master Duel at the moment. However, I am playing, when I'm playing ranked at the moment and also in the Duelist Cup, I'm seeing a lot of this Cash Tira brew. Uh, I, we, I can try and, if you're watching this on YouTube, I can try and uh put a put a list uh, an, an example list on the screen right now basically what people are doing in pure snake eye is they are they are playing Kashira unicorn fenrir Kashira birth 
and uh, Wraith Soth in their Snake Eye deck. And I think that version has a lot going for it. I don't know exactly if it's the best version. Uh, I would have to try it more. But I do think it's got a lot of benefits. Like, um, one big issue with Snake Eye, obviously, is how does it deal with Maxi? And besides the normal Called by the Grave, Ash Blossom, and Crossout Designator, this deck has a very unique way of dealing with Maxi, which is just, you start with the Cash Tira cards, unless your opponent shotguns Maxi, which some people do, some people don't. Um, but assuming your opponent doesn't shotgun Maxi, you can summon Unicorn first action, if you have it, obviously. Uh, and then, if your opponent Max sees you after, um, you can... It's more realistic for you to just stop playing, essentially, right? Because your opponent Max sees you, you give them one or two draws, you resolve Unicorn, you look at their extra deck, you know what they're playing, um, you can take away really important one-ofs, um, which matters against most of the top decks in the format, right? Against um, against Snake Eye decks, looking at the extra deck, taking the Promethean Princess can be huge if they don't play two copies. Um, against Mathmic, you can take important pieces. Uh, against Vanquish Soul, you can maybe outgrind them by taking the rock stuff out of the, the extra deck. Because you can just leave the Unicorn on the field, and then your opponent has to play into it again on the next turn. So you basically get two extra deck rips, which can be really, really annoying for most meta decks. Um, and I think that version is interesting. I haven't played it much myself yet, but I can say whenever I played against Snake Eyes and they had the Cash Tira cards, it was actually quite annoying for me. It, 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 was, it was quite annoying. I think the, the version has potential. If you want to prepare for the Duelist Cup or current rank, definitely try this deck if you want to try hard. Like, if you want to if you want to have the best deck possible, um, I think it's either Pure Snake Eye or Cash Tira Snake Eye. That's, um, that's it. What about Infernoble? I, I don't like Infernoble in Master Duel right now. I think, I think there is other, like, Infernoble is just another combo pile, and there are better out there. Like, if I want to play a combo pile for whatever reason, I can play Super Heavy or Math Mech. And those are just better decks than Infernoble, I think. Um, so that's that. Right? The same is true for a lot of other um, combo decks. Like, they are all playable. You can make Master with Infernoble. You can make Master with, um, with Plants. You can make Master with all kinds of combo piles. But um, I don't think that makes them better than other decks in the format. Right? So, yeah. All right. Uh, once again, as always, when I do these tier lists, if I miss a deck or if I missed a certain deck and you want my opinion on it, you can leave a comment down below under the YouTube video. I'll try to go through it and try to answer as many as I can. And uh, yeah, I hope you found this insightful. I hope you find it helpful. I hope it helps you on your Duelist Cup journey, whether you're going to try really hard or just play a couple games for fun. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. You know the deal, YouTube. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And uh, goodbye, YouTube uh, viewers. Bye-bye. Peace. Okay. Where's Rika, though? I mean, where, where do you... Have, when <laughs> Rika doesn't really do anything. Uh, Foxtrex, thank you for the six months. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. All right, I uh, I need to go to the toilet really quick. I'll be right back in a second, and then we do the we do the 2014 recap thingy. I'm really hyped for it. Let, let me. Uh, it's also the one where we appear for the first time, Chad. Uh, I'll be back in just a minute.
All right. You guys have your uh, blankies ready? <laughs> Uh, Alpha Omega Flash, thank you for the four months. Speaking of speaking of retro Yu-Gi-Oh, speaking of old Yu-Gi-Oh, I was thinking about doing a uh, doing a thing because of the. Um, I was wondering what you guys thought of it. I don't remember if I said this already on stream, but I I'm, I was thinking about um, because of how fun the the Goat Format event in Master Duel was, right? Uh, and then I realized during that format. During that GOAT format event, right, we didn't actually need the in-game mode to do it, right? We just did it in, in a dual room, which didn't even have the rule set for it. And we just played with the rules uh, with viewers, right? I was thinking about doing that for, for like old formats uh, where we just play it in Master Duel, right? Because you don't really need to wait for an event to happen to do that. You could technically do that at any point. But yeah, we'll see. Anyways, get your blankies ready because we have another episode. <laughs> you waited, you waited with the you waited with the resub until I was watching your recap. Uh, I see you. All right, uh, the law YGO is in chat right now. Appreciate you. Thank you. All right, let's um, let's move over. We have twenty fourteen finally. 2014 recap finally um it's an hour long so get your people blankies let's go <laughs> so where did we leave off i'm already pausing we're four seconds in where did we look where, where did we leave off 2013 what was the end of 2013 dragon ruler ravine ruler ravine ruler right that's where we're at Thank you to the person in chat saying we left off with 2013. That's, I, I knew that. I knew that, that, okay, thank you. Okay, yeah. Sixth Sense Ravine Rule, yeah, okay. As we exited 2013, a tier zero menace was raging on. With the last two YCSs of the year, we saw Dragon Rulers absolutely take over for a second time that year, with the main culprit this time being that of Sixth Sense, which allowed you to Is there echo? Oh, I can turn down my speakers a little bit completely set up off its activation regardless of the roll's result. With such an oppressive card causing a tier 0 reign for Dragon isn't. Rulers right at the end of the year, a ban list would be put in place on January 1st, 2014, and knowing that, the hit shouldn't be surprising. Newly banned were Dragon Ravine, Return from the Different Dimension, and Sick- Dude, I did not remember that Dragon Ravine was a banned card. That's- that's wild. Like, looking back at Ravine Ruler format, Six cents and return absolutely deserved to get banned at that time. Ravine? I don't I didn't even remember this. Six cents. All hits at Dragon Ruler, as well as self-destruct button, a card that simply had caused too many headaches. But that's a super duper lame hit, by the way. That is like such a You should have just hit the Dragon Ruler hit, basically, is what that is. Just hit just hit the rulers. For tournament play to remain legal. Newly limited were all four dragon oh, rulers, okay, anyway. debris dragon, they, and if sacred... they limited all the rules, they did not need to ban Ravine. Sword of Seven Stars, as hits the Dragon Ruler. I don't Divine think. Wind of the Mist Valley in response to a couple of FDK brews that were popping up using Harpy Dancer. Final Countdown is a hit to the popular stall deck. Spellbook Popular Stall Deck, hmm. Of Fate is a hit to Spellbook's remaining best card, and Magician of Faith returning from the banned section to one copy. Newly semi-limited were Chaos Sorcerer and Lone Fire Blossom, both coming back from limited. Lastly, newly unlimited were Arc Lord Christia, Constellar Ptolemy M7, Mizuki, Plague Spreader Zombie, TG Striker, Tour Guide from the Underworld, and Fire Formation Tanki, being a wave of cleanup from when the OCG and TCG lists were linked. Overall, this ban list did one thing major, which was killing the tier 0 version of Dragon Rulers, knocking out a majority of the heavy hitters from the deck as well as cracking down on some of the more toxic cards for events like Countdown and Self-Destruct Button. In addition to this, the Zexal Mangas Volume 4 would release- That, that besides, like besides the unnecessary hit to Dragon Ravine, that was still a pretty good ban list. 
release a week later. Overall, bringing it was number pretty good. 47 Nightmare Shark, a direct attacking rank 3 option that would see niche play for now, but became a lot more relevant later in the year as a game closer. As the first event of the year, YCS Sydney would take place on January 19th, and would ring in the year with no Dragon Ruler decks appearing in the top cut known lists. A first from the previous half a year. The field here had devolved no, a bit are back we entering to the tendencies fire water of the Dragon now? Ruler era with Fire Fist being the standout deck of the event. Although notably, when I say Fire Fist, I primarily mean a Beast Warrior control pile with Fire Fist yeah, right? at the center. Fire so Water take that with no. a grain of salt. Anders Co. would take the event on Teleport Karakuri, being a surprise run for the deck to take in the- I remember Anders. Anders is a really nice guy. He, uh, he showed us around Japan when I was there for the very first time in 2012. I don't even remember why he was there, but he just was. I think he was a translator at the time. Uh, and he just, he was, uh, very nice. He gave us, like, some, some tours around, uh, around Japan. Newly weakened meta game, but the meta would soon solidify around its big threats in Fire Fist and Mermail once again as it had in pre-Tachyon formats. This led us into the first core set of the year, and with the meta in a newly reset position, any new strategy with enough support could easily take the spot of the new top deck. Legacy of the Valiant. Release date, January 24th, 2014. Oh, dude, Silent Honor Arc was such a cool card. Set type, core set. Major strategies, Sylvan, Ghost Trick, Bujin. Impact, a clear push, but not a breakthrough. Legacy of the Valiant would be the first core set of the year, and with it would come both a new archetype as well as a wave of support for two archetypes from the tail end of 2013 to try and change something about their position in the metagame. The new archetype was Sylvan, a series of plant monsters that also brought with them a new keyword to the game in the form of Excavate. Don't tell this to Patrick Hoban, but Bujin uh, was never that good. <laughs> Don't tell him that though. In which you reveal a set number of cards from the top of your deck to do an effect. Many previous cards that did this, such as Pot of Duality, would also be eroded in the coming months to reflect this change. As for Sylvans, each of the main deck monsters had two effects, one that lets you excavate a certain number of cards and send plants you find to the graveyard, putting the rest back on bottom of the deck, and the other triggering when excavated and sent to grave. These included peace. What did duality say before? I think it was just like, I don't know, reveal the, reveal the top three and then shuffle them back in or something like that? who could excavate one on summon and revive a level four lower plant if excavated, Kumashurmo, who excavated up to five on being flipped and pops a spell trap when excavated, Marshall Leaf, who excavates up to two on normal and pops a monster if excavated, Hermitry, who can excavate one. Open played Sylvan, not Bujin. Oh, that's what I meant. I meant Sylvan. Did I say Bujin? I meant Sylvan. Uh, Sylvan was like... Sylvan to me, it was a cool deck. I, it was fun. I just never thought it was that good. Uh, and I still don't think it really was good at the time uh it was just really high rolly and basically it was around that time that like there was like patrick hoban patrick hoban was like uh propagating this idea of you need like maximum ceiling whatever deck can do the most is the best deck and all that stuff you know and sylvan was like if it worked it was the highest ceiling basically um but it didn't work that often. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't that good, really. ...once per turn, and can rearrange the top three of your deck when excavated. I'll say, a rank eight that can declare a card name once per turn to excavate and either add it to hand if called correctly or send it to the grave if not, and can detach one when a card is sent from deck to grave by card effect to put a card on field on either the top or bottom of the deck, and their field spell Mount Sylvania, which can send a plant from hand or field to grave to stack a sylvan card from deck on top of the deck, and during the opponent's end phase, can excavate one like the sylvan monster effects. This archetype had a lot of good bones to it, but the issue primarily lied in that all of their consistent lines required access to Hermitry, who was level 8. This could be offset slightly thanks to the recent semi-limit of Lone Fire Blossom, but general plant support could only take the strategy so far for now. Ghost Trick would receive a new wave of support here in Jack Frost, who can summon itself when the opponent attacks you directly, flipping the attacking monster face down, Mary, who can be discarded when you take damage to summon a Ghost Trick from deck face down, Dulahan, a rank 1 that gains attack for each Ghost Trick you control and can detach one on either player's turn to have a monster's attack that turn, able to cycle a Ghost Trick when sent to grave, and Museum, a field spell that prevents set monsters from being attacked, lets monsters attack directly if all opposing monsters are set, and flips any monster that deals battle damage face down. Ghost Trick would continue to see no standalone success, but this wave would bring enough useful stall pieces to the archetype that it would see some consideration as a splash engine into other decks that needed more stall and swarm tools, like Monarch. Bougie Visual error? Wait, what was the error? I didn't catch it.
Monsters attack directly if all opposing monsters are set, and flips any monster that deals battle damage face down. Ghost Trick would continue to see no oh, standalone the wrong success, field spell. Okay, but this okay, wave okay. would bring enough useful stall pieces to the archetype that it would see some consideration as a splash engine into other decks that needed more stall and swarm tools, like Monarch. Bujin would receive another wave here in Arasuda, a Beast Warrior Bujin that can summon itself when a Bujin is banished from field or grave, and can draw one and discard one if a Bujin was added from deck to hand that turn. Peacock, who can send itself from hand to grave in main phase 2 to search a Bujin. Hare, who can banish itself from grave on either player's turn to protect a Bujin, Bujin from destruction once that turn. And Tsukiyomi, a light locked rank 4 that can detach one to send your hand to the grave to draw two cards, and can summon Beast Warrior Bujins from grave up to the number of materials it had when removed by the opponent's card effect. Bujin, already being in a decent position following the January 1st ban list, would take the support and run with it to be a solid potential strategy in the upcoming metagame, and the support did a lot to reinforce that. Moving into notable standouts, Kalantosa would be a very notable inclusion for the level 2 Earth Beast strategy, able to pop a card on It's really... Now that I'm seeing all this, this set really wasn't all that great. I mean, we're going to talk about Exiton Knight and Honor Arc in a second. Those are like generically good staples, but all of the archetypes here... I feel like we're kind of lackluster overall. Like they, they had competitive impact, but only really because they had killed everything or like a lot of the stuff that was previously actually good. And um, people didn't really know what else to play. And, uh, and then secretly, honestly, in 2014, the best decks are still the decks from before Dragon Rulers. Like it was not, a, it was people wanted to play the new stuff and they maybe thought it was better, but it wasn't. Like you look back at this and you're like, okay, technically after this, you should still only be playing like Mermail, Fire Fist, and, uh, and Infernity, right? Like you shouldn't be playing those new decks technically from a competitive effect. standpoint. This would also be complemented by Obedience School, able to summon three level two or lower beasts from deck with their effects negated, being an excellent starter for that strategy too. Tackle Crusader could, when sent to grave, flip a monster face down or bounce a spell trap the opponent controls to hand, being a solid piece in rock decks moving forward. In the same vein, Gorgonic Guardian is a rock locked rank 3 that can, on either player's turn, detach to drop an opponent's monster's attack to zero and negate its effects that turn, also able to, on your turn only, destroy a monster with zero attack. While incredibly powerful, the rank 3 rock restriction was just a bit too I've much of a time this for the card being to summoned. play, but it would see rogue level experimentation in later 2016 with another archetype getting legacy support. The generic extra deck pool itself would see a bunch of new additions here that would shape the meta moving forward, such as number 101 Silent Honor Arc, a generic rank 4 that can detach two materials to suck up an opponent's special summoned attack position monster as material, bringing one of the best removal tools to the rank 4 pool. I say one of because released alongside Arc was Evil Swarm Exiton Knight, a generic rank 4 that could, once per chain- Now this card was genuinely crazy at the time, like uh, Honor Arc was good and everyone played Honor Arc, but Exiton was insane in your main phase or the opponent's battle phase, if the total number of cards your opponent has on field and in hand is more than you, nuke the field except for itself, being one of the best rank fours due to either being a setup breaker or providing a layer of protection going into the opponent's turn, demanding a removal prior to the battle phase. Lastly for the Exceed pool would be Downard Magician, a spellcaster locked rank 4 that could also be overlaid onto any rank 3 in the main phase 2, giving 200 for each material and dealing piercing damage, being a solid option for rank 3 decks to convert their used Exceed monsters. In addition to the Exceed pool additions, the generic Synchro pool would also receive Leo Keeper of the Sacred Tree, a level 10 Synchro that cannot be targeted by card effects except in your main phase 2, becoming the premier level 10 generic Synchro overnight. Rank Up Magic Astral Force is a spell that can target an Exceed to overlay another Exceed onto, that is the same type and attribute but two ranks higher, and can be added from grave to hand how much was Axiton when it came out i want to say like 90 maybe 100 it had sp little it has S it had sp little night levels of of expensive for sure like uh it would fluctuate a little bit but it, it was definitely up there like um i i believe in the early weeks after the release you could maybe get him for like 70 80 i don't know exactly but then eventually i think it was 100 bucks because it was like Almost every deck played one, and some decks, because of how good it was, even played two, I think. Um, yeah normal draw for turn. Not seeing any play now, but would find an incredibly interesting niche in the coming months. Shared Ride lets you draw a card every time the opponent adds a I card from Shared deck Ride. or grave to hand except by drawing, being a searcher equivalent to max C, seeing side deck play in certain formats where searchers are extremely heavily played. Lastly, Skill Prisoner can target a monster you control to negate any monster effect that targets it that turn, able to be banished from grave to do it again, seeing niche use against certain strategies. YCS Atlanta would be held a week later on February 2nd, and this event would be the first of many this yeah, year. Yeah, see, there you go. Not, not even the format isn't even solved yet, but people already know. Like, oh yeah, you shouldn't be playing this new stuff. Like, it's all kind of bad. Uh, Bujin was like, all right, but yeah.
we're going to refer to as half-sealed events. For context, this year specifically, we'd see almost every YCS that took place in North America run a standard constructed event until top 16, at which point all players would swap to doing a draft event using whatever the current battle pack was, being War of the Giants for this event. This meant that the top 32 would still be indicative of what decks were performing the best in the meta, but it doesn't mean that the deck that won the event would be the best deck of the event, rather what the winner used to reach top 16. With all that preamble out of the way, Fire Fist, or more specifically the Bear deck as Konami's official coverage refers to it, would continue to take the lion's share of the top cut, even being the piloted deck? by Christian Jorge who would take first place here after the top 16 draft. Girgia was the other very notable standout here, rising into a dominant position with the discovery of Girgia gear being able to swarm with the Girgiano pieces, standardly being mixed in with Kar Curry tuners for synchro access. Heratic would crack into the top cut with multiple showings here, though notably was the Heratic Ruler variant in all cases. The Dragon Rulers had found their next core to latch this onto deck, and ride into meta. This deck was so fun. This deck was so fun, and this <laughs> this is a this is a rare. I want to say this is a rare uh, Josh Market W, so we have to talk about this one because they don't happen very often. Uh, this Hieratic Seal of the Ashes trap card that you see right here um, is a continuous trap that lets you return banished, I believe, banished dragons to the graveyard and lets you foolish Hieratics from the deck. So it like loads up your graveyard to keep bringing back the dragon rulers. And it was a secret rare that ever since it's been printed, which I don't even know when that was, has not seen a single ounce of play. No one has ever played that card. And um, it was like Galactic Overload. Yeah, something like that. Galactic Overlord. Uh, it was like a 50 cent secret rare or something like that at the time. Um, and I picked these up because I was sometimes talking to Patrick Hoban at the time via like Facebook Messenger or something like that. Uh, and he would, I, I don't, I think it was his idea. I don't remember exactly, but he told me about like, what do you, he asked me like, what do you think of this card? You know, I was thinking about building Hieratic with this and so on and so forth. Uh, and so I went ahead and I ordered some, only three though. I only ordered three for myself. I didn't do a, I didn't do a marketing move, but that thing went up like crazy after the stick top. Um, this might even be Patrick Hoban's list. I don't know. Uh, it has upstarts, so it could very well be. But um, yeah, that was uh, that was uh, one of the rare market uh, Josh Market uh, Ws because I I knew he was gonna play that deck, uh, and I I picked up that card because it wasn't very expensive viability, though this time was notably less powerful due to only having one of each ruler at their disposal, relying more heavily on the heretic side of the deck to do the heavy lifting and swarming. This would lead into the year's first structure deck a week later, which would itself set the trend that this year of structure decks is going to be exclusively focused on bringing new support to previously introduced archetypes, starting with a GX era staple. The Cyber Dragon structure is from 2014, really. Cyber Dragon Revolution. Release date, February 7th, 2014. Set type, structure deck. Major strategies, Cyber Dragon. Impact, a couple of specifically useful cards. Cyber Dragon Revolution was the first of three structure decks this year aimed at taking a meta strategy, or in this case a singular card, and making a full modern strategy out of it. In the case of Cyber Dragon, the idea was to make swarming with them far easier to enable exceed plays. Their new cards here included Core, who's considered Sidra on field and engrave, searched a cyber spell trap on normal, and could, if your opponent controls a monster and you don't, banish itself from grave to summon a Cyber Dragon monster from the- I don't even think this deck had any impact until we got Infinity a year later. I don't remember people playing this deck much, or at all, really. Seed that could detach to summon a Sidra from Grave, can banish a Sidra from hand or field to boost itself by 2100 that turn, and floats into a machine fusion on effect destruction by the opponent, and No, Maxi is still at three. It was in the side deck in the other deck list. It's still at three. The re it's, it's hard, and this is hard to comprehend for modern Yu-Gi-Oh players. Back then, Maxi was not always an auto-include at three. We're starting to get to the position where it will be soon, in these recaps, like, but historically, we are at a point in Yu-Gi-Oh where the card is not yet always insane. Because there is a lot of decks, especially in this format, against Fire Fist, Maxi is not good. They normal summon and pass a lot of the times. Uh, Maxi is only good on, like, Wolf Bark, maybe if they play the Rescue Rabbit version of, um, of, of like, Fire Fist with Vanilla. Some people did that. Some madmen. But like the uh, the average outcome with Max C against Fire Fist is you either never get to use it, you maybe get a one for one out of it, and if you wait very long, maybe you get maximum a plus one. So like the card isn't actually that good in this format. 
plant, which can use one effect if you have a Sidra in We're not, we, we, we're not even talking about being the search light yet. machine or shuffle and back the light other machine. Stuff that that never really While this didn't turn summons. Cyber Dragon into its own viable standalone strategy for the meta, it did do a couple of interesting things. The first was core, as by being a Cyber Dragon that you could normal summon and ducks under bottomless, it became a side deck option to use against machine decks to make Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon without risking tripping back row. The second was Nova, as while it wouldn't be played at all for the time being, Nova was one of those cards that would be broken wide open in early 2016 for reasons out of its control, but we'll get to those soon enough. Reprints here included Cyber Hydra, Cyber Valley, Super Poly, MST, Trap Stun, and Deep Prison to name a few. YCS Berlin would be held two weeks later, and from the results here, oh the Bear God. Deck and Mermail would split the main portion of the representation, with Alpay and Jean taking first place using a trap heavy, reckless greed build of Mermail. YCS Sao Paulo would be held two weeks Hold up. Dude. I. I topped YCS Berlin with no sleep. It was like, <laughs> I had a really rough start to YCS Berlin. Is this a dweller? No, this is not the dweller, sorry. I, at YCS Berlin, I was X2 really, really early. And at the time you needed to, to go X2 uh, to top. Uh, and so I won... All the rounds towards the end of uh, of day one, but I don't. For some reason, I wasn't really feeling it. I wasn't really feeling confident at that tournament because I lost twice relatively early, and I, I don't know. So when the others were like, after day one of YCS Berlin, they were like, "Yeah, we're gonna go out. Are you gonna join us?" I was like, "Yeah, yeah, sure." And so we went out. I um. I wasn't really able, I, I, I didn't sleep. Uh, and then on the next day, I also couldn't really speak. Um, which is a whole nother issue when you're trying to play Yu-Gi-Oh. And so like, I, uh, I for some, somehow, I ended up winning uh, out on day two. And uh, terrible idea, by the way, don't, don't do that. Uh, and like, I... Um, I, I lost, uh, I, I won top 32, and I, I played Mermail, uh, and this is not something to be proud of, by the way. Well, playing Mermail is something to be incredibly proud of, but the, doing what I did is not something to be proud of. But then in top 16, what I'm trying to get to is the reason I lost in top 16 is so freaking embarrassing because I was so tired. I played against Firefist, um, and <laughs> I made Exiton. I and they fiendish chained my Exiton when I activated it, right? And the way Exiton is worded, it's actually not once per turn, but it's once per chain. So it's not like Zeus, where you can go effect, they try to negate it, you chain it again. Uh, but you can technically activate Exiton, and then later on you can activate it again, right? So what I did, my opponent had like two set cards and like a bunch of monsters. And I summoned Exiton, used the effect, they fiendish chain it. I summoned Draco Sack. And I pop like one of the monsters instead of popping the fiendish chain and using Exiton again, instantly winning the game. Uh, and so that's why that's how I lose in like that was game three, I think. Uh, so, yeah, I, I threw really hard because I hadn't slept the night before, which was really uh, annoying held two weeks later, and from the results here, the Bear Deck and Mermail would split the main portion of the representation, with Alpay and Jean taking first place using a trap-heavy, reckless greed build of Mermail. Yeah, this was, this is almost what I played, because Alpay and I were in the, the same team the at the time. With I Alpe played, uh, I don't know if it, I, the list wasn't probably, wasn't the exact same, probably, but like, uh, it was, uh, there, I think there's a deck profile out there, but it's, it was the, I, I, I was also playing reckless greed Mermail. This was the only time in my entire, um, however many years of playing Yu-Gi-Oh that I have activated three Reckless Greets in one turn uh, at a tournament. I just opened three Reckless Greets in like round 10 or something like that, going first. So I just like Omega killed them the turn after. It was crazy. They were really mad. <laughs> 
Gene taking first place using a trap-heavy Reckless Greed build of Mermail. YCS Sao Paulo would be held two weeks later, and while this event was also a half-draft event, the draft would be everything before Top 16, so the decks listed here did not necessarily earn a spot in the top cut by the deck's merits, so take the top cut here with a grain of salt. Carlos so Arrazo would take the event always? Arm, able to take down four rounds in a row in the slimmed down matchup spread. YCS Chicago would be two weeks after this, and it was back to using Sealed to play out from Top 16, so the top 32 decks here did earn their top spots themselves. Girgia took a sizable portion of the top cut here, once again rivaling the Bear deck and Mermail, with Bujin once again close behind the pack. Tom Mock would take the event, using Bujin to claim his top 16 position before the draft, moving the deck away from its stun roots to a more exceed-focused strategy with Bujin Carnation covering its board flooding. This event would be directly before the year's gold series, and while the past few years had hit a solid groove with the sets, this year's would be different to say the least. Is that an example of a good diverse format? Uh, Fire Water? I, I like, okay. Um, technically, yes. I do think fire water format is a good format to go back into, and it is potentially a, a format that has the potential to become a very cool time wizard format. Um, because there is, so if you ask me, there was only really one deck during that time, and that was water. I loved Mermail. Um, if you asked others, they would answer the same thing, but they would say fire instead, because they preferred fire. Those were like the two main things, the two main questions. is like, do you play fire or do you play water? Amongst like really competitive players at the time. But I think, secretly, none of, like, not, neither Mermail nor Fire Fist are so good that they completely exclude everyone else from playing something different, right? You can play a lot of other stuff in that format and succeed with it. They're not better than uh than fire water but they're like still very very good and then there's infernity which is kind of annoying because infernity was like secretly i think during a large portion of 2014 uh infernity is like secretly really really good but people didn't really realize it until it wins worlds this year um but infernity is kind of crazy and i think that that is one of the decks that could ruin like time wizard format because infernity is is <laughs> infernity is it's a cool deck, I like it, but I, I, it's not that great. <laughs> um, post Soul Charge Infernity was the best by far. Yeah, maybe it's maybe it's until Soul Charge when when yeah, and people don't really. That's the thing when there's so many decks in Yu-Gi-Oh, like people don't always revisit everything immediately, right? There's like not one card that comes out and people go, oh, this card would be really good in this deck from three years ago, right? Premium Gold release oh, date Bells. March twenty eighth, twenty fourteen. Set type reprint set major strategies the meta of the past year ocg imports all previous gold series well, not impact the a new take on the gold series formula premium gold would be the first full shakeup of the gold series formula not by introducing new rarities although it did introduce the new gold secret rare but also by importing ocg gold cards in, the set in addition to the reprints it normally provided which included a block of 10 cards nah. from each of the previous gold series and 21 new to gold rare cards while most of these imports held no impact there were a couple in particular that were notably impactful specifically in beals of the diabolic dragon a dark tuner locked level 8 synchro that can't be destroyed in battle and gains attack equal to any damage you take being a solid inclusion for any dark deck that can make it in addition to this ancient pixie dragon would be the manga counterpart to ancient fairy dragon drawing one after activating a field spell and can pop a monster on field if a field spell is active lastly for the imports would be the gimmick puppet monsters which we've seen some of previously but Dude, here would finally i hate Druid gimmick Dog. puppet the artworks man they all make me uncomfortable why did they make these you can special summon herself from grave by banishing another gimmick puppet from grave magnet doll able to special summon itself from hand if your opponent has more monsters than you and you only that's the idea yeah, but I don't like the idea. <laughs> and Junk Puppet, an archetypal revival spell, which gave gimmick puppets the material to actually consistently summon their rank eights, though it would still be notably weak in the meta. Reprints here included Lone Fire, Honest, Valor, Light Pulsar, Dark Flare, Eclipse Wyvern, Fire Fist Tiger King, Solar Recharge, Forbidden Chalice, Forbidden Lance, Tenki, Rhoda. Dude, looking back at it, the more we watch these, by the way, the more I realize they've always been hella late with these reprints. I don't know why we even why we are even surprised at this point anymore. Like why after playing this game for 20 years are we still surprised that the reprints are like two years late? Freaking uh Chaos Dragon reprints in 2014? That deck's been good in 2012. Mirror Force, Torrential, Dad, Caius, Gold Sark, Minecon, Bottomless, all, Judgment Dragon, all of Mizuki, <laughs> Plague Spreader, Ryo, Stardust, Armor Master, Armed Wing, Icarus Attack, Morphing Jar, BLS, Chaos Sorcerer, Raikou, Celestia, and Summoner Monk. 
In addition to this, a new banlist would drop three days later on April 1st, attempting to shake up the meta manually, as the past few sets seemed to have done nothing to change what decks were good. Newly banned were Morphing Jar 1 and 2, which was directly targeted at Empty Jar, a rogue level annoyance that never seemed to crack the YCS circuit in recent months, though notably this ban came directly following Morphing Jar's reprint in Premium Gold. Newly limited were Wolf Bark, a hit to the bear deck, Abyss Gund, a hit to Mermail, Rekindling, a hit towards fire decks in general, but more so targeted at Fire King, and Infernity Barrier, a hit to Infernity. Newly semied were Seal of Convocation, a hit to Dragon Ruler's current best build, and Necroface, returning from one. Lastly, Unlimited were Magical Stone Excavation and Primal Seed, two points of cleanup. That's a very weird ban list because it doesn't really change anything. It's only like very, very slight, slight hit on the wrist, basically. Uh, like one gunned is like, I didn't, re I, didn't re I didn't even remember they did that. Overall, these hits were effectively slaps on the wrist for most of the top performing decks in the meta. <laughs> Though you say late, I say early for Time Wizard. Fair enough, fair enough. We lacked any hits towards Gearkia, which was about as old, if not older, than the other decks getting hit. YCS Mexico City would be the testing grounds following the new list, being another sealed top 16, and notably the top 32 for the most part remained unchanged, yeah. with the same four decks taking the majority of representation yet again. Alejandro Suarez would take the event through the sealed draft, using Mythic Rulers to pilot himself into the top 16, seeing another Dragon Ruler variant that could still compete following the January list, though he did not make his list public. YCS Vegas would be a week later, using the same draft format that would be standard for all draft events for the remainder of the year. And following the success of Mythic Rulers in Mexico City, the deck would rise a bit into the third place representation. Should they bring back this sort of draft style thing? I don't know. I, I, the, on the one hand, I like draft. I think it's very fun. On the other hand, what I find weird is doing this sort of 50-50 split. I find that weird. And like, if I want to go to a draft tournament, I want to go to a tournament that is entirely draft. If I want to go to a constructed tournament, I want to go to a tournament that's entirely constructed. I don't know. Maybe that's not that bad. I, I, the, the problem is I haven't played in one of these, right? I haven't played in one of these tournaments, the 50-50 ones, basically. So the way that these worked, in case that wasn't clear, is I believe it was the Swiss portion. You go to, a, to the YCS with your own deck and you play Swiss rounds. And then if you make it into the top 32, you basically don't need your deck anymore because then you get booster packs from battle pack and you build your deck with those. Uh, or you draft, I don't know exactly if it was draft or sealed, whatever, you get, you, you get the idea. You basically have top cut with, uh, with, with those. Other way around? Maybe, the, is it the other way around? Oh, was it? Are you sure? I don't think it was the other. I, I'm pretty sure it was Swiss with real decks, because they maybe the reason was they didn't want um, they didn't want to deal with drafting with a thousand people or something like that. Right? Maybe there was one both ways. I don't. It, it doesn't really matter. You guys get the idea. Whatever. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, and the only one that I know. Personally, is I've went to YCS Brussels, which was in 2013. We've looked at that recap already. And that was a YCS where it was only sealed. You didn't have to bring a deck, basically. You got battle packs and you build your deck with those. And that was pretty fun. I know that. It was pretty, pretty fun. Presentation slot. Girgia and Mermail would continue to take those lion shares of the top cut, but notably, Firefist would see a rapid decline in its top cut performance following the limit of Wolf Bark, which in turn limited the amount of recursive rank 4s the deck could make. Denny Yu would be crowned the winner following the sealed draft, making it to top 16 using Heratic Ruler, being another example of the ruler strategy's relevance still remaining Influence in Whispers Dragon. In the This would be lead to a new import set series premiering two weeks later, and though for the most part the OCG import sets up until now have been mostly unimpactful, this one was going to completely upend the balance of the meta as we knew it by introducing multiple metal warping threats. Ooh, Guri Bandit was really cool. Oh, my boy, Matt Dragons Petition. of Legend. Release date, April 25th, 2014. Oh, no, oh, no, 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 not that set. one, not that one. Major strategies, Tamias, hands. Impact, the beginnings of a beloved format. Dragons of Legend would be the first set in a long line of OCG import sets themed to the legendary dragons Below? from the season four format? Dude, I'm gonna get some haters when we watch the hat format portion right now. I'm not a fan of hat. 
artwork of the original Yu-Gi-Oh! I Internet. hated Hanfor As such, the primary card featured for this set would be the Eye of Tamias, a spell that lets you fuse a Dark Magician monster into a fusion that lists it as material using only that monster. It will access the classic Dark Paladin and Dark Flare Knight, but also the new targets of Dark Magician Girl the Dragon Knight, a fusion of DMG and a dragon, able to discard to pop a face-up card once per turn in either player's turn, and Amulet Dragon, a fusion of Dark Magician and a dragon that can banish any number of spells from Grave on Summon to boost its attack by 100 for each, floating into a spellcaster in Grave on Destruction. These were clearly trying to push a Dark Magician deck, but were far too little to get anything off the ground for that to be meta-relevant. However, these were not the imports that had people talking, as there were six more imports in this set that would all hold meta-relevance over the coming months. The first of these would be Curry Bandit, which in the end phase of the turn its normal summon can contribute itself to excavate 5, add a spell trap from those to hand, and put the rest in the grave, being an insane starter for the theorized Sylvan deck, but also holding power as a heavy mill tool. The next would be Mathematician, who on normal summon could bend I any level 4 or lower monster from deck to grave, drawing a card if destroyed by battle, being effectively a better version of Armageddon Knight for various strategies that also drew a card after, like Card Trooper, seeing play for these reasons. Next up was Wiretap, a counter trap that negates a trap and shuffles it back into deck Wiretap for no cost, cool. being solid as most counter traps that did something similar required a cost of some kind. The last three, however, would be- This set was really cool. Outside of Soul Charge being way too broken, I really like, and I wish they did this more often, is if we had side sets that instead of giving us like useless archetypes that maybe become good in the future, I would like them to have more side sets that just have like a bunch of generic bangers. You know what I mean? Like, just give me more like good staples, good generic cards that can maybe- revolutionize a couple of decks rather than just giving giving me like three new archetypes every month and we have to play a guessing game of which ones are good or not right um because it's impossible to tell whether a side set archetype is going to be good or not because it completely depends on if they get support in the main sets anyways right um well the most impactful of all. Fire and Ice Hand were a duo of cards that, on destruction, pop a monster in Fire Hand's case or a spell trap in Ice Hand's, and if you do, floats into a copy of the other. These two would be a powerful control engine of sorts that would be splashed into almost everything over the coming months, representing six total pops if they go uncountered. Lastly, Soul Charge was a spell that could, for the cost of a thousand life points of monster and your battle phase that turn, summon as many monsters as you'd like from the graveyard. Needless to say, a mass monster reborn was incredibly powerful, and on top of that, it was available at three copies on release. Well, Meaning that every that. deck could have access to a mass board revival for the cost of simple life points, which at this stage were becoming more and more of an expendable resource. YCS Paris would be held the same weekend, though a major point of note here needs to be that due to a logistical issue, Dragons of Legend would not be legal. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. I played YCS Paris. I topped YCS Paris, but I didn't remember. I don't think we had those cards. Yeah, though they, they, they were not here. They were not legal. Uh, for YCS Paris, I have another funny story. I There, there was another... Um, uh, obviously I played Mermail, um, and there was a card that I only heard of on the Friday, uh, that people were hyping up for, for Mermail decks, and I, I really wanted to play it. Uh, and the card is called Aqua Mirror Cycle. Uh, it's technically, I think it's an Ice Barrier card, technically. Uh, it's target a water you control and two waters in the graveyard. Shuffle the first target into the deck, and if you do, add the second target to your hand, right? Uh, or oh, Gishki, not, never mind, not Ice Barrier, Gishki, obviously. Yeah, my bad. Um, and it's, it was a... <laughs> it was, at the point, it, it gets a reprint in 2015, but at the time of the YCS, it was only in Galactic Overlord as a common card. And no one in the entire freaking venue of YCS Paris had that card. Uh, so I had to go and buy Galactic Overlord packs until I will pull the freaking uh, common card to put into my, my Mermail deck for YCS Paris, right? And I bought... I bought how many how many packs did you do you think I had to buy until I buy uh, until I pulled the common? How many packs was it, you think? It's very funny because I was not the only one looking for the card. A friend of mine was also looking for it, and so we went there together. Right? We went there together. And I 
the absolute giga chat that I am pulled that shit out the first pack. First pack, I pull it. Easy clap. And I only wanted one copy anyways, right? My friend has to buy... <laughs> I think it was an entire box almost i don't think it was an entire box complete i don't it was it was not 24 but it was like 20 and the they spent a solid like i think it was like 80 bucks and i was sitting there i got i put i pulled it in the first pack they were mad they were mad mad uh but yeah we <laughs> it's very funny for the main event of this particular YCS. Peter Gross would take the event on Mermail, being his third YCS win after his two wins in 2012. Yeah, the new cards... There, there it is. He played it too. The double Aquamira cycle in, in his Due deck. Due to a you logistical see that? issue, Dragons of Legend would not be legal for the main event of this particular YCS. Peter Gross would take yeah, the... Yeah, there it is. There it is. Um, no, nah, Peter, uh, Peter was insane back in the day. Uh, one of my uh, greatest motivators as well as to like uh, eventually... Uh, I always told him I want to catch up to you one day, and he kept winning more YCSs, but yeah. The event on Mermail, being his third YCS win. I did catch up eventually, but it's because he stopped playing, I suppose. After his two wins in 2012, really... the new cards of Dragons of Legend would have to wait just a bit longer to rock the meta, but they would have to share the stage with the next core set released three weeks later. Primal Origin, release date May 17th, 2014. Set type, core set. Major strategies, artifact, Sylvan, Fusion. Impact, ending the Zexal era with Why a was there an Allura in a water deck? Because uh, it was uh, very easy to, to resolve it. It was uh, Allura was one of the best cards in Mermail because it was around centered around Gen X Undyne. And so you would always have that dead controller in your hand. Uh, it was really, really nice to have Allura. Allura was essentially part of Greed in, in, in Mermail. Primal Origin would be the final core set of the Zexal era, and if it wanted to end the era with a bang, it absolutely accomplished that in spades, introducing a new meta archetype in addition to providing support waves to multiple other archetypes both in the meta and just outside of it, completely shaking things up prior to the WCQ circuit taking place over the next few months. The new archetype here was Artifact, a series of monsters that could be set in the spell trap zone, summoning themselves if popped on the opponent's turn while set there, including Moral Talk, who pops a face-up opponent's card when summoned on the opponent's turn, Beagle Talk, who pops up to two of your set cards if summoned on the opponent's turn, Scythe, a TCG exclusive that locks an opponent's extra deck summons if summoned on the opponent's <laughs> That's TCG exclusive too? God damn. Turn. Durendal, a rank 5 that can detach a material to change an opponent's activated monster or normal spell trap effect to destroy a spell trap the opponent controls, and can detach one to mulligan both players' hands in either turn, with both effects being tied to the same once per turn restriction. Ignition, a quick play spell that pops a spell trap on the field, then sets an artifact monster from deck to the spell trap zone, able to skip the opponent's next battle phase and Besides pop Scythe, the artifact archetype is actually really, really cool and well designed, I think. Uh, like, it was a really, really... It had the exact right balance, I feel like, between... They weren't super broken, but they were absolutely competitively viable, and they had a very unique playstyle. Like, it was really cool, I think. I, I liked artifacts a lot at the time. And besides what cards like Lancia and Scythe would do eventually, like, these cards were super cool at the time. Well set and Sanctum, a trap that summons an artifact from deck, Even Sanctum. triggering like, their Sanctum was really good, but it wasn't, like, outrageous. ...to the opponent's turn, and pops a card on field if destroyed while set. Artifacts were a solid engine of removal pieces, specifically in the case of Morale Talk with Sanctum, being considered as a splash engine for various decks in the meta to buff up their removal options. Sylvan would receive a solid second wave of support here in Cherub Sprout, able to excavate up to two on Special Summon, and able to Special Summon a level one plant from deck if excavated. Sage Koya, able to be Special Summon from hand if a Sylvan is sent to grave except in the damage step, can excavate one once per turn, and can recur a Sylvan spell trap if excavated. Princess Sprout, a TCG exclusive that contributes herself to excavate one, send it to grave regardless of the results, and place a Sprout monster in grave on top of the deck, and if excavated, special summons herself with any level between 1 and 8. Orea, a rank 7 that can send a plant from hand or field to grave to reorder cards on top of the deck equal to the level of the sent monster, and can detach one to excavate up to 3 cards, send any plants to grave, and bounce that many cards on field to hand. And Charity, a spell that lets you draw 3 that stacks two, including a Sylvan, from hand on top of the deck. Charity is a crazy card for the deck, because you also get to decide what's on top of your deck, like that card's insane. 
stacking every card in hand if you don't have a Sylvan. This wave would iron out a ton of the issues that Sylvan had from its initial debut, with Sage and Princess specifically filling a major void in the excavation access and Charity reading almost like a custom card for the archetype. But whether or not it would perform would have to be seen in the YCS and WCQ circuit. Bujin would receive a couple of new cards here in Harume, a Beast Warrior Bujin that must be special summoned by banishing a Bujin from Grave except Sylvan itself. Was good. And rips it, was, a card from it was viable, let's say it like that. Let's not argue too much about it. I didn't personally like it that much, but it was definitely a meta deck. Um, whether it was the best deck or tier one or tier two, let's not argue about it. I think it was, I think it wasn't that great, but people did play it and people did have success with it. So it's all right. Both players hand on destruction, Sinew, a TCG exclusive that can banish itself from grave to boost I've the never seen by this the guy in my life. battling monster, having battle damage from that battle, and Amaterasu, a three material rank four that can this detach one to cool. either summon a banish level four lower on your turn or add a banish level four lower. To this is one on of the examples where this card was never really good in Bujin because it required three monsters and Bujin really never had that, um, at least very, very rarely. But this was really cool in like other combo -y decks a couple years down the line like i played this in like rank 4 minerva turbo and it was really cool opponent's turn the support would be solid for bujin all around giving the deck an in archetype honest of sorts as well as more rank 4 swarming options seeing a boost in the deck's play rate from the support moving into the standalones trap tricks would receive dianea with the standard trap tricks immunity special summons the trap tricks from grave on normal and sets a whole normal trap from grave on special being an incredibly powerful piece to pair with a previously released mermelio for a splash engine madolce would receive angeli with the standard madolce reshuffle effect and contribute herself to summon a madolce from deck shuffling it back into the deck at the end phase of your next turn which was an incredible starter for madolce by giving the deck a immediate access to Hootcake, who already had a monster engraved to banish thanks to Angeli's tribute not triggering the shuffleback effect. Majesty's Fiend was a counterpart to the previously released Vanity's Fiend, locking monster effects while on the field, being a solid counter strategy to various decks in many different metagames. Number 103 Ragna Zero was a new rank 4 option, able to detach to pop a monster who has a different attack than its original, drawing a card if you do, being a solid tech choice for countering out some decks. Number 80 Rhapsody and Berserk was another rank 4 option, a able to detach to the banish a card in the opponent's grave and can equip itself onto another it's like, to boost that monster yeah. by 1200 attack. Being considered as another for some reason, for, the for some reason, I have really good memory of what's in like the really old sets, right? Like you say, like Phantom Darkness, I can tell you what's in that. If, if you say uh, Light of Destruction, I know what's in there. All that kind of stuff. Uh, these sets, even though I played Yu-Gi-Oh super actively at the time, I don't know exactly where all these cards are from. Somehow, I don't know why this is. Maybe my memory was a lot better when I was even younger. But for some reason, I just don't remember exactly where all these cards came out. I don't know what the reason for that is. I'd be interested in knowing it. Maybe it's because I opened more packs as a kid. Maybe it's that. Maybe I was more hyped for new, uh, for new sets as a kid. I don't know. Um, it, it's not dementia. I, I can tell you that, chat. It's not that. Um... You started buying singles? I mean, I guess, but even then, it was more like... I mean, nowadays, I, I do that too, but I still know mostly where the cards are from. I mean, I have a lot more, like, um, exposure to it because we always, like, review stuff on stream and, like, we, we, like, all that kind of stuff. So I guess nowadays it makes sense that I know, but yeah effect primarily. Karen Gorgon was yet another new rank 4 option, able to detach one to change any card singular target to the itself Minshua, okay. being primarily played as one of the strongest rank 4 bodies on 2450 that still had a decent effect attached. Exceeds Universe is a trap that sends two Exceeds to Grave to summon a non-number Exceed with a rank that is equal to the combined ranks of the sent Exceeds or one less, attaching itself as material to that monster, being mostly niche in its applications, but did give rank 4 focus decks the ability to access the rank 7 and 8 pool in a roundabout way. Evo Singularity was a new trap for the Evol archetype, able to summon an Evil Czar from the extra deck and attach an evil tile and evil sar from grave to it as material being a powerful cheat out option for the floundering strategy lastly and the band played on was a continuous trap that locks summoning of monsters Yay, with the same level or rank gates. as monsters you already controlled being a solid floodgate option against various exceed strategies ycs philadelphia would be the same weekend being another top 16 sealed event and though gear yeah. would continue to dominate so, the space so this is the beginning this is the beginning of what people refer to as hat format right and uh, the reason why people look back at it very fondly is because of exactly what you're seeing on the screen right now. It's a super, super diverse format. And that's why people like liked it or liked it at the time as well. I personally never liked this format. Not because it's super diverse, actually. I don't really care or I never I, did, I didn't care about that at the time. It was just my problem with this format is that 
a lot of these decks here have super rock paper scissor matchups against each other right um like for example hat the deck the hat deck cannot really beat Girgia, but Girgia itself honestly is it was not that good of a deck it was super like easy to pilot just set a bunch of traps open gear armor and gear 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 if not then you're in trouble it was a it was i didn't like gear gear it was boring uh hat was kind of boring super slow matchup as well right your opponent sets a gear gear armor hat can't deal with it um trap tricks artifact trap tricks i don't know so eh, bujin is super resident sleeper evil swarm is resident sleeper so like for the most part it's not that there is a lot of different decks. It's just that out of all these different decks, I didn't really like anything. They, there was no deck in here where I really felt like it was good. And Mermail didn't feel that great to me at the time. Because, you know, it was just like, I don't know, like no one really played it. So I just assumed it was dead kind of until Euros when we brought it back out and it won Euros. But like, it's um, at the time, German Nationals is around this time, I think. And uh, I played hat. I I uh, and it's it was just I I didn't enjoy myself that much. A very clear change was present from the top 32. The engines present in the past couple of packs would pop up in various strategies throughout the top 32, but most notably would be mixed with each other to form their own standalone decks like Trap Tricks Hands, Artifact Trap Tricks, and what would become the face of the format in retrospect, Hat, short for Hand Artifact Trap Tricks, which would mix just... the titular engines together to form a tight. It's just giga boring, isn't it? It's just like. This 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 deck plays like a gold format deck control package with the hands providing their monster and spell trap pops in combination with board swarming the artifacts providing disruption and rank five access through more no, i love pop. it and that's okay that's all right i i, I don't I'm, it's it's definitely a format where i can see why people liked it I, it just wasn't for me personally it's completely fine if you enjoyed it no no nothing wrong with that and trap I, tricks I personally just didn't the uh, like trap tricks, trap hole you're saying gold is boring providing... i think gold gets stale after a while yeah it's i think gold is fun if you haven't played it in a long time and you go back to it for a couple games i don't think gold format is as good as people made it out to be for a long time like people celebrated goat like crazy for a while and i i felt like it got stale i was also very hyped on goat for a while and then i just realized hey uh, a lot of games are actually the same they just take very long um yeah spell trap removal and rank 4 access this deck would become the face of this period of Yu-Gi-Oh's history known as hat format which would be considered one of the few times in post 5d's Yu-Gi-Oh, where a deck that is very much a control strategy would be the dominant force on the metagame chris leblanc would win the event following the top 16 draft using madulce to reach top 16 sporting not only the new angeli line but also fire and ice hand to help clean up board states marking the player's second ycs victory following providence in 2012. this would lead into the next structure deck over a month later and with most players using the results from the ycs to prepare for the upcoming wcq circuit this structure deck would be the last opportunity to provide any kind of shakeup to the already shattered apart metagame. Oh, the light sworn structure, that's cool. Realm of Light, release date June 27th, 2014. Set type, structure deck. Major strategies, light sworn. Impact, a revitalization to Millers. Realm of Light would be the second of three structure it's decks aimed at cool providing structure. new support to previously meta archetypes, this time being Light Sworn, who would receive three new monsters to bolster their ranks, being Raiden, a tuner that's able to mill two to boost himself by 200 for each Light Sworn milled this way, milling two more in the end phase, Minerva, a tuner who searches a Light Dragon on normal whose level is less than or equal to your Light Sworn names in Grave, milling two in the end phase, and mills one when sent from hand or deck to Grave, and Michael, a level seven Light Lock Sinker that can pay a thousand to banish a card on field, shuffles back any number of Light Sworns in Grave on destruction, gaining 300 life points for each, and mills three in the end phase. These three would each see their own usage both within Lightsworn strategies and in general, with Raiden specifically seeing the most usage due to being a miller that is also a tuner I mean, for Raiden is just access. Raiden Making is just like a solid card, unironically. Like, uh, even in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, there's like a chance that you could play Raiden at some point again. Like, being a warrior, a tuner, a target for Charger the Light Brigade, like if you ever have a deck that has insane value with cards in the graveyard, uh being able to just like charge mill three search raiden summon it mill two more it's just mill five you know like there's decks that could use that i could see it i'm extremely useful for various strategies reprints here included jd celestia jane lila gareth wolf 
Aaron, Lumina, Arcus, Raikou, Honest, Blackwing Zephyros, Necrogardna, Solar Recharge, Charge, Foolish, and Breakthrough Skill. The WCQ circuit for the year would begin with the European WCQ on June 29th, and for the most part we'd see similar results to Philadelphia, with Gear Gear Dude. remaining the top deck and Hat remaining in the this top tournament. Two. There man. were a couple of other decks, however, in the top cut worth talking about. Sylvan would see its first set of premier event tops, seeing three total, with Sage Goya ironing out many of the archetype's boss monster issues and Sylvan Charge being one of the best enablers the deck could have asked for, utilizing all of the archetype's power cards in addition to plant staples like Lone Fire Blossom and Rose Archer, as well as the mass excavation and dump tool that was Curry Bandit, fitting extremely nicely into the archetype. The other breakout success here would be Light Sworn Ruler, tying Hat for representation and utilizing the newly released Light Sworn Structure this deck, deck with Raiden really and cool too. It was similarily <laughs> utilizing Curry Dude, Bandit for the nest was in here. Eugen Height would take the event on Mermail, showing the deck can still- <laughs> This guy, this guy wanted to play Frog Monarch until the Friday of this tournament. Until I told him, dude, you cannot play Frog Monarch at this tournament. Please take my Mermail list and play it. Please, please play it. Don't play freaking uh, Frog Monarchs. And he did. And here we are. God damn it, man. Perform in the metagame despite the heavily shifting Freaking landscape frog around. monarchs. The South American WCQ would be the same weekend, and Hat would see a far more pronounced performance here, taking a fourth of the representation at eight slots from the top 32. Roger Moran would take the event on Machina Gadget, being a surprising run for the deck to take, the notably playing the singular Machina copy gadgets. that was allowed of Radox, providing Grave Revival and Rank 7 access. Extremely notably here, looking at the top decks, Hat variants took 11 total top spots, with 17 decks across the 32 running the hand package in some shape or form, showing the engine's dominant <laughs> and staying power. The Oceania <laughs> WCQ CQ would be the next weekend, but unfortunately due to poor coverage, we only know the top four here, where Girgia would clear into three of the four spots, with Donald Thompson defeating all of them to take the event with Firefist Artifact Hand, trading out the Trap Tricks engine of most hat builds for a fire. I mean, yeah, this is basically just hat, but we play another normal summon, which is Bear. Can Bear pop face down monsters? I for Gore. Can Bear... Yes? That's pretty good against Girgia then. That's pretty good. I'm surprised not more people were doing that then. That seems like a pretty good uh, answer to uh, to Gugia. If you have that, dude. Don't call it fat. Fire fist. I guess it's fire fist artifact trap tricks. I guess it is fat. Unfortunate. This package. The Central America WCQ would be the same weekend, and Dolce would have a surprising showing here, taking five top spots and landing in second for representation. More notably were the Hat Cores, which managed to weave their way into the top cut seamlessly here, with hands appearing in nine lists, trap tricks in seven, and artifacts in five. Jose Lagunes would take the event on Mermail, being another surprising victory for the deck to grab. Lastly would be the North American WCQ. Looking back, held honestly, looking back at this particular format, the success of Mermail is not surprising at all. Um, as well as these, the upcoming support of Infernity as well. It's just a literal matter of Infernity and Mermail are the two best decks to use Soul Charge in. Because what you would do with both of these decks is you would have something that was decently explosive, but they would win the deck, they, they would win the game every single time they had Soul Charge. And that card was at three, uh, we were playing between two and three copies because sometimes it wasn't great in the opener. But like, whenever you could resolve that card in those decks, you would win the game, right? Sylvan too. Nah, Sylvan just sucked ass in comparison to those two. Like, unironically, Sylvan is not not great. And then, uh, yeah, it's, it's not that surprising. All the other, everyone was basically control-pilled during this format. Everyone was like, yeah, Hat is the shit, Girgi has the shit, set so many trap cards, and, and so on and so forth. It, it, it wasn't real. It wasn't real. Everyone was control-pilled. It was not that. It was not that. You just played a little bit of setup game with Mermail or Infernity, you soul charge on them, you win the game. Every time. And unfortunately, most of the coverage of this particular event has been lost to time, though we do know some of the goings-on through Attendee Testament. Though the deck was solid, most pro players in the North American circuit were actively lying about the strength of Sylvan as a combo deck in the meta, saving their list for this specific event, and it <laughs> they, would perform well. They, being it was two layers of lying at the time. So I think this was something where a lot of pro players were hiding, hiding the Sylvan goo, right? Because they wanted to, to bring it out at the NAWCQ, right? And then they lied a second time because then they said it was good. Uh, and I, I firmly believe that the only reason that this deck was good is because so many American 
pro players were pilled on it and they played it. Had they played other decks, they probably would have done better. And it was it only had representation in Top Cut because so many pro players played it. Like it wasn't actually that good. One of the most represented decks that we know of from this particular event, with some innovations to the strategy, including Blast. Like this being deck, used as a this deck, unironically, if this doesn't open Curry Bandit or Lone Fire Blossom, have fun playing the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Because you won't. You're not taking part. Your opponent's playing. You're not. Rank 7 enabler with Sage Koya. Miracle Fertilizer putting it's in insane capped. work due to the ruling that its destruction effect will not trigger if a monster that it revives is used as exceed material. And Spore being used not only as a tuner, but as exceed material for rank 8 by banishing a Sage Koya for its summon. Corey McDuffie would take the event on hat, being the first premier event win for the rapidly rising... And guess what? None of them... I don't think anyone qualified for Worlds with Sylvan. None of them. strategy, notably playing Pot of Dichotomy thanks to its various types the deck utilized. The day after the NAWCQ, the ban list would be updated, yeah, notably seven. being the first time a non-emergency ban list would take effect on a date that wasn't the first of the month, being July 14th, though clearly the list was delayed as to not interfere with the WCQ events already scheduled. Newly limited were Girgia Gear, the primary combo piece of the Girgia strategy, and Goyo Guardian, being released from his ban status. Newly semi-limited were Formula Synchron, Magician of Faith, and Rhoda, all coming back from one. Lastly, newly unlimited were Dimensional Prison and Mirror Force, sparking a bit of debate around these two specifically due to their natures as powerful battle traps, especially Mirror Force. But in retrospect, that call was correct, as their time was coming to an end. We were standing on the precipice of a new era, and though it wouldn't officially start for another month, the year's starter deck would give us a hint as to what was in store. <laughs> Supply Squad. Space Time Showdown. Release date, July 11th, 2014. Set type, starter deck. Major strategies, summoners, magicians, empowered warriors. Impact. What the hell is that? Space Time Showdown would be the year starter deck, and as such would also be our first look at the new mechanic for the Arc 5 era, Pendulums. These monster spell hybrids can either be summoned as normal or set in one of the newly coined Pendulum Scales, a new zone placed on each side of the board, with a unique effect for where it was placed. When destroyed, Pendulum. Pendulums go to the extra deck face up rather than the graveyard, and most importantly, one Pendulum, I don't even remember how we how we received Pendulum. I, it, it was so weird at the time. I still remember very vividly to this point in time. Uh, I remember friggin' thinking that you needed to put the low scale on the left and the, the high scale on the right. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to Pendulum summon because that made sense in my head. I was like, the low scale has to go on the left. The high scale has to go on the right, otherwise it doesn't make sense. Because why else would they put it on the left and the right side of the card? Right? Like, why is it on both sides? Because I thought, I thought that the blue one ha is the one that it has on the left, and the red one is the one it has on the right. And so to this day... If you put your high scale to the left and your low scale to the right, in my eyes, you're a criminal. You're, you're a criminal. That's all. That's, that's all. It should be that way. And time gazer magicians have a scale of 1 and 8 respectively. That would mean that while they're in scale, you can pendulum summon out any monsters between the levels of 2 and 7. And upon finding this out, the community lost their collective minds. The idea of being able to summon out massive bosses for effectively free signaled the end of Yu-Gi-Oh, as many called it. However, this was completely overblown. There was experimentation initially with cards like Jinzo and Miss Valley Apex Avian being cheated out, but the reality of the situation was that because of the lack of pendulum monsters, the mechanic was nowhere near as busted as people would think initially. Aside from these two, the only new release here worth noting was Supply Squad, a continuous spell that lets you draw a card once per turn when a monster- People were so hyped on Supply Squad. But the truth about Pendulum is that, like, Unlike Xyz or unlike Xyz or Synchros or now Lynx, it's another fundamentally flawed mechanic um, because it requires you. Like it's funny because all of the mechanics that require you to put cards into your main deck historically have all been flawed. Whether it's Ritual, Fusion, or Pendulum, all of these mechanics are 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 super flawed because you have to basically. The only times that these mechanics are actually good is when they make cards that cheat the system, basically. When they make fusion spells that generate more card advantage than they should, or when they can, when you confuse from other, uh, like when you confuse from the deck or banish from the graveyard or whatever, like you never fuse the way you're supposed to fuse. 
You never ritual the way you're supposed to ritual. You're never... And you also never, if you really think about it, you never really pendulum summon the way you were supposed to pendulum summon. You would never just... Oh, I mean, sometimes you would, but like you wouldn't actually go and place one card on the left and place one card on the right and then pendulum summon from hand. You wouldn't do that. You would have to like basically make your entire deck revolve around pendulum cards and then you would still need cards that would cheat the system by being one card scales for example like freaking uh uh monkey board or whatever right Klee did that what the hell are you talking about first of all your ha your name is called your name's runic circular and Klee did not freaking do that the first thing that Klee played every time was a scale that searched another card every time the hell are you yapping about you think Klee is a is a traditional pendulum deck Holy. Metal Foes? Metal Foes didn't do that either. Metal Foes cheated the system by creating free cards in the extra deck. You, would, you wouldn't scale two Metal Foes and then Pendulum Summon. You don't do that. You go scale, scale, pop your scale, set one, put another one in the scale, pop the other one, set another card like that. It's not, you don't actually, you know, like... Destroyed, there's always the there, 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 these strategies. mechanics are all just flawed because if you do it the way they want you to do it they all suck because guess what at play having five cards in your hand if two of them are dedicated scales to sit in your scale and not do anything else you play with three cards in your hand which is terrible even if you get a special summon from it it's just not great it was never it was never a good mechanic it was only good because they made obscenely broken cards for it Lastly, with the release of this starter deck, there were a couple of adjustments to the master rules alongside the pendulum changes. The first of these was there could now be an active field spell on each side of the field, meaning that you and your opponent no longer had to fight for field spell priority. Though up until this point, that rarely I mean, happened. For pendulum, to they specifically the had to even change the rules to even make a viable. Game, was that the player going first no longer drew for the start of their first turn? This was an incredibly important change, as now there was a real sacrifice for choosing to go first over going second. And though most players would still choose to set up first over the extra card moving forward, it did introduce an interesting dynamic into the decision process. Following this year's starter deck, Battle Pack 3 Monster League would release on August I don't, 1st. I think the, I think the new field spell ruling at the time, I never I never really minded it. Uh, and I, I don't think it's a terrible decision that they changed it. I still think it'd be, it, it, I think it'd be kind of better if they didn't do that. You know, looking back at it, it's not something I'm super mad about that they changed it, but uh, I, I think it'd be cooler if we could counter field spells. I, and I, I also think like, from a logical standpoint, uh, I don't know, it doesn't really make sense, does it? Like, if you really think about it, you know, like, field spells apply to the entire field, like, just let me just, you know, like, I don't know. Runic would be in shambles, it would be. A lot of, a lot of modern card design wouldn't work, because they designed them with that in mind. But I think it would be, uh, it'd be, it'd be, it'd make more sense. I think, I, I don't think I like that they changed that. What draft pack would be used for YCS? It wouldn't for the like solve all the problems of modern Yu-Gi-Oh. That's not what it would do, it. but like as it's all not that bad. monsters would be considered but... all types, being exceptionally interesting as a sealed draft product for that reason. In addition to reprints of Levier the Sea Dragon, Digusto Emerald, Gakaga Cowboy, Diamond Direwolf, and Ghost Trick Alucard. The World Championship would be a week later from August 9th to the 10th, and this would be one of the most interesting years in terms of coordination for Worlds, as it would be the first time that both ban lists had to be taken into account. In previous years, what the ban list would encompass was never really up for discussion since both regions followed this was, the same This list. was a really interesting one, because um, I helped Eugen prepare for this a little bit, and it was I think it was the first tournament, actually, that he played in, or that we ever had, that had five card opening hands and not drawing on your first turn. I'm pretty sure that's, that is what changed, right? Why am I mixing that up right now? Is, that was that master rule, right? Did they just say that? That, that, that is what they changed. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I, I thought I'm, I, yeah. So that was like, a massively weird thing to to prepare for um for a tournament where you basically had no idea what people would make of it essentially right um the only thing that we did the i think the mistake that we made during that preparation is we never really we didn't have infernity on our radars um we tried all of the decks but we didn't try infernity enough 
or maybe even not even at all. So yeah, that was an oversight. However, since the TCG OCG split, Worlds would need to have a ban list that effectively combined the harshest hits from both regions, leaving some decks in a much weaker or stronger state than initially expected, especially with the removal of exclusives from both pools. Because of this, and despite having multiple hits on the ban list, Infernity would move to be the most successful deck at the event, taking three of the top eight as well as the World Champion title piloted by Sahabi Karadine of Canada, marking himself as the 2014 World Champion. This would be the final event of the Zexal era, fittingly enough, and as we moved into the next era of the game, the core set kickoff would do more than just reset the previous meta, it was going to obliterate it into the stratosphere. Oh, Duelist yes. Alliance. Release date, August 15th, oh, yes. 2014. Set type, core set. Major strategies, Satellar Knight, Shadal, Burning Abyss. Impact, the beginning of modern Yu-Gi-Oh. Duelist Alliance is considered by most in the community to be the exact moment when the older version of Yu-Gi-Oh officially pivoted to the modern era, being one of the strongest set releases of all time. But why is that? We've had era kickoffs that heavily impacted the meta before, like in the case of Duelist Genesis, and this one wasn't even that strong of a start for the pendulum mechanic at all, so why is this the pivot point? Well, it's not about the mechanics here, it's about card and deck design. Up until this point, most formats have a significant amount of back and forth, specifically in the viability of trap cards, especially summon responders and battle traps, and that was because at the time, decks operated at a speed that was forgiving enough to allow for those kind of disruptions, especially in the meta recently here with hat format being effectively a control-centered metagame. With the release of Duelist Alliance, it wouldn't change immediately, but it would be felt over the coming months as the game slowly transitioned away from back row heavy games and focused a lot more heavily on the strategies and archetypes own inner strengths to build boards with, and fast. Mm. This set would introduce a new monster type in Worms, and five new archetypes into the meta, ranging from rogue picks to the absolute top tier. So let's start with the core three, with each being based on one of the previous summoning mechanics aimed at taking that mechanic higher than before. The first of these was the Teller Knight, the Exceed archetype of the bunch, aimed at using their light warriors to quickly swarm the board, gain resources, and enable three material ranks. This game sucked. This first wave yeah, included the Neb, who searched a Teller Knight Always. on summon except itself, Altair, able to revive a Teller Knight on summon, Vega, Never who summoned good. a Teller Knight from hand on summon, Anukali, who dumped a Teller Knight from deck on summon, Beltros, a 3 material rank 4 that keeps the opponent from responding to his summon, and can attach to pop a card on field once per turn. Floating into a Teller Knight when sent to Grave, Skybridge, which swaps the Teller Knight on field for one in deck with a different name, and Stellar Nova Alpha, a counter trap for spell traps that sends a Teller Knight from field to Grave as cost, drawing a card on resolution. This deck would be heavily reliant on its back row line, similar to the decks of the Hat era, and as such, though it did see a fair amount of success in the coming months, the moment more options were available in the pool, so Teller Knight would fall out of favor just as quickly as it came in. The second archetype was Shadal, focused on fusions, which yes. not only had all of their monsters include effects when sent to grave, but also Hell flip effects yeah. on all of their main deck pieces, being a pseudo revival of the flip mechanic that we haven't seen in quite some time. This included Falco, who revives a Shadal face down on flip and summons itself face down when sent by effect, Hedgehog, who searches a Shadal spell trap on flip and a monster if sent by effect, Squamata, who destroys a monster on flip or dumps a Shadal from deck if sent by effect, Dragon, who bounces a card on flip or pops a spell trap if sent by effect, Beast, who draws two and discards one when flipped, or draws one if sent by effect. Shadal's also Winda, dope, a fusion man. of a Shadal and a Dark that can't be destroyed by opponent's card effects and locks both players to one special summon a turn, recurring a Shadal spell trap to hand when sent to grave. Construct, a fusion of a Shadal and a Light that dumps a Shadal card on summon and destroys any special summon monster at battles, recurring a Shadal spell trap to hand when sent to grave. Sinister Shadow Games, which dumps the Shadal from deck to flip any number of set Shadal's This is face. probably my favorite Shadal card, by the way. Sinister Shadow Games was so dope. It's up. Core, able to summon itself as an effect monster with any attribute for a Shadal fusion summon, recurring a Shadal spell trap to hand when sent to grave. And lastly, and most importantly, Shadal fusion, a fusion spell for Shadals using hand or field, but could also use materials from deck if the opponent controlled any monster summoned from the extra deck. Shadal fusion specifically would be the catalyst for an absolute overhaul to the fusion mechanic as a whole, with almost every deck that used fusions in a relevant way having a Shadal fusion like card for the foreseeable future. Though Shadal was recognizably powerful out the gate thanks to this incredible first wave of support, aside from the usage of core, they had no way to access Construct in Archetype, causing the deck to be mixed with other popular light attribute engines to offset this, most commonly being the Artifacts and Light Swarms. The third archetype was Yang Zing, the Synchro archetype of the group, being the introduction of the new Worm type as well, with all of their monsters sharing a common effect to float into another Yang Zing name when destroyed, each being a different attribute, I mean, they made and these all, all of the non-tuners both allowed kind of quick synchros on the opponent's turn using only like. Yang Zings, and gave their Synchro <laughs> monster an additional effect, with Suwani boosting the Synchro by 500, Vian preventing battle destruction, Bixie providing trap immunity, and Pulao providing spell immunity, while Chiwen, the tuner of the bunch, could revive itself when a Yang Zing when... was destroyed. Their Synchro target, Baxia, was a level 8 Wormlock Synchro that spun 
away cards on summon up to the different attributes used to make him, and could pop a card you control to revive a level 4 or lower once per turn, triggering the Yang Zing summon effects. Lastly for spell traps, Path let you cycle back 3 Yang Zings to deck to draw 2, and Creation let you, if a monster you control is destroyed, summon a Yang Zing from deck once per turn, being effectively an additional Yang Zing float. Yang Zing would have its rounds of experimentation off of this initial wave, but was considerably slower than both Teller and Shadal, leaving it easily as the weakest of the three core archetypes. The last two archetypes here were actually both TCG exclusive archetypes, with Konami of America aiming to introduce two different archetypes here to build out over the course of the next few core sets, rather than sinking all of their time and effort into Noble Knights 2.0. The first of these was Yue, a series of warriors based on Wait, various UA's sports that can summon themselves from hand by bouncing another UA to hand once per turn. This That's first wave crazy. was Mighty Slugger, who stuns cards and effects while attacking, Perfect Ace, able to discard on the opponent's turn to negate any card or effect once per turn, and Stadium, a field spell that searches a UA monster when you normal summon a UA, and permanently boosts all UAs by 5 the first time a UA is special summoned each turn. UA have the bones to be a decent rogue level deck here with this start, but absolutely needed more support to go anywhere, especially needing a no tribute normal summon specifically to be able to trigger stadium reliably. The second, and easily more important of the two, was Burning Abyss, a series of level 3 fiends based on the Divine Comedy, with each main deck monster sharing an effect that they would be automatically destroyed if they share the field with a no- So Burning Abyss? You guys, you guys often hear me joke about Burning Abyss's viability, right? Because I never actually played the deck at the time, right? Um, I, I never, I, I do like quite Abyss. Uh, I, I, I do like Burning Abyss quite a lot, though. Um, I do think I always thought it was really, really cool. Uh, it's just kind of like I never actually thought it was the best deck. Um. So I never actually played it from a competitive perspective. But I, I do think the cards are pretty damn dope and also really fun. Uh, I just always, like, for example, in this format, I played uh, uh, Shadol. The year after, I always played Necroz and all that. I always, had, I always ended up finding other stuff that I, that I liked more. And I always had, to be fair, a relatively easy time against Burning Abyss as well. Like, Shadol would cook Burning Abyss. Necroz would cook Burning Abyss, all that kind of stuff, right? And then in 2016, I played that Pendulum deck with Kirin at Euros that also cooked Burning Abyss. So somehow, no matter what I played, it always just had a freaking easy time against Burning Abyss, right? And so, um, I just, I just, I just, the, the way I remember Burning Abyss is that, um, I, I don't know, I would just beat it every time. I, I'd like, the, the, uh, there's like, yeah, I, I, I think this is a phase where I go years of playing against Burning Abyss at major events, and I don't think I ever lost to it. So, yeah. Um. <laughs> non-burning abyss monster and could all be special summoned from hand while you control no spells or traps with each it's also cool having deck, an effect though. when sent to grave with graf summoning a burning abyss from deck i'm telling Seer farfa you don't grave. have to i already did plenty of times he knows this grave and storm who searched a level three dark fiend in the end phase of the turn at sent to grave with these effects sharing a hard once per turn with their summon effects they would also receive an exceed monster in dante a rank three that could detach and mill up to three to boost his attack by 500 for each card milled that turn swapping to defense mode if he attacked recurring a ba to hand if sent to grave lastly traveler could summon any number of burning abyss monsters sent to grave that turn while it seems like this it's, was only it's a, a small really wave, dope which it was design, being though. only five like cards the artworks total, and all that the idea this way behind it be i think is really cool dominant threat in the metagame for the foreseeable future similarly to shadal they don't we'll really the make him YCS. like this anymore moving into the one-off pieces odd eyes pendulum dragon would be the only noteworthy addition to the pendulum mechanic here able to pop itself in scale during the end phase to search for any pendulum with 1500 or less attack being also notable as it was the arc 5 protagonist ace monster so while low impact now it was certain to get more support over the next few years like how stardust and utopia had before it Artifacts would receive Lancia, who was interesting as it didn't Trolls have to bear. be on field for its effect as opposed to its kin, able to tribute itself from hand or field as a quick effect to prevent all banishing until the next turn, being considerable as a side deck option. Nefarious Archfiend Eater of Nefariousness is a level 4 that can summon itself from hand if you control a spellcaster, able to pop a monster on your field in the opponent's end phase to summon itself from grave, being considered as an option for Shadal specifically as it could be used as both exceed material and as a way to pop your monsters for their effects. Battery Man 9 Bolt, on summon, searches a Battery Man monster and doubles its attack and defense, destroying itself in your next phase, being such a powerful piece of search capability for the deck in addition to being summonable off of Charger that it would help Battery Man see rogue level play and success in the coming months. 
Castell the Skyblaster Musketeer was a new rank four that could either detach uh, one to flip Castell's a monster face dope. down or detach two to spin away a face up card, being an extremely powerful addition to the generic rank four pool. Magical Spring let the user draw cards Ooh. equal to the face up spell traps the opponent controls, then discard equal to the face up spell traps you control, yes. being specifically billed as a counter for the pendulum strategy, which would see side deck play as pendulums grew more popular. The Monarch Stormforth allowed the user to tribute summon using an opponent's monster that oh, turn. No, oh no, not Monarchs. Oh no, not Monarchs. I'm not ready yet. I thought that was 2015. Version of Soul Exchange for many tribute summon focused decks like Monarch nah, and Battery nah, nah, nah. Time Space Trap Hole could, when the opponent special summons from the hand or extra deck, spin that monster back, dealing a thousand to the user for each, being a considerable tool for decks utilizing the Trap Tricks monsters. Lastly, Fearless Lightsworn Archer was an OCG import that was a tuner and, when sent from deck to grave by card effect, special summoned herself, able to tribute herself to pop a monster and mill three, being exceptionally powerful for Shadal specifically as a material for construct using Fusion's deck material requirement. Without question, Duelist Alliance would completely change the game as we knew it forever, though would have to wait a few weeks for the first true opportunity to prove itself, with another set release occurring between then and now, which itself would be a monumental change for the game as a whole. Twenty fourteen Oh, Mega Tins the first date, time. August yeah. 29th, 2014. Set type, reprint set. Major strategies, every single relevant card from Tachyon to Valiant. Impact, lowering the price of the previous meta. The 2014 Mega Tens would be a new yearly staple in the game as a whole, bringing reprints for every powerful card from a core set release in the previous year, with this one covering Tachyon, Judgment, Spectres, and Valiant. In addition to these reprints, they also came with 10 promos that also guaranteed certain reprints, being Tiger King, Susanoo, Gorilla, Nightmare Shark, and Crane. As for the relevant reprints in these packs, every Mega Pack included one Secret, Ultra, Super, I mean, yeah, Mega and Tens are great. All we all know that. Like, this is the, we all know this nowadays, because this is 10 years ago. For now, like now, nowadays, it's normal that they do this every year. Back in the day, this was freaking like that, that. That was insane. I think that this was received almost the same way that we received the rarity collection this year, because it's never been done before, and we were just like so happy about it. From their original sets, bringing easy access reprints of Armades, the Bujens, Coach Soldier Wolfbark, Constellar Omega, and Sombre, Divine Dragon Knight Felgrand, Evil Swarm Exiton Knight, and Kerkion, the Fire Fists, Gear Gear Gear, the Ghost Tricks, the Harpies, Hoot Cake, the Mecha Phantom Beasts, Mistake, the Mythic Dragons, Master Key. Astral Force, Sacred Sword, Silent Honor Arc, Star Eater, the Sylvans, Transmodified, okay, the Trap Tricks, every card Wider that we've already and listed in the video. <laughs> and Exceeds Encore. In addition to this, the 5D's Manga Volume 6 would release here, giving us Hot Red Dragon Archfiend, a level 8 synchro that popped all other attack position monsters on the field once per turn, being sort of the opposite of the original RDA, who nuked defense monsters. YCS Madrid would be the first YCS of the era, taking place on September 7th, and almost immediately we'd see the result of the new releases and how they would be putting the previous meta landscape to shame. Shadal, Soteller Knight, and Burning Abyss would together take over three-fourths of the top cut representation here, which would actually grow more substantial over the course of the following months. There's also Burning a chain Abyss burn. would see four top spots here, with a couple of extremely notable inclusions seeing play here in this build. Thanks to the lack of Burning Abyss names, many other monsters would be played <laughs> here to help fill the gaps for Come now, on, such man. as Ryza for tributing over a special summon Come TA, on, and Mathematician for Shadol. jumping a BA for setup. One card, though, that was absolutely not a space dealer was Tour Guide, who could summon any Burning Abyss from deck with her effect, negating their destruction condition on the field, able to make a rank 3 to detach the summoned BA and trigger their effect, most commonly hitting Skarm this way, as Skarm's end phase search could also There's grab a Tour Guide. In your side Another day. interesting tech piece here was Rank Up Magic Astral Force, able to turn a spent Dante into Constellar Pallades, able to add itself to hand for your draw if you milled it using Dante. So Teller Knight would take the second largest slice, feeling very similar to the control decks of the previous format thanks to the heavy amounts of back row that the deck relied heavily on to make up for its limitations. As standardly, you could make a 3 material rank 4 easily, but beyond that relied heavily on resource management between copies of Altair and Deneb to carry the grind game, with Stellar Nova Alpha specifically being one of the most key pieces of their back row lineups. Shadal would take half of the top 32 representation, hey. as well as first place piloted by Joshua Schmidt, utilizing three Moral Talk and one Fearless to cover the light requirements for Construct Sun. Oh, I love this deck, man. Uh, the double Cyclone, dude. The double Cyclone! Uh, the, 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 the thing is, the thing is, at the time, I I didn't feel that great about this thing, this tournament, because uh because of what happened in top four, right? Where I where I summoned the wrong fusion with super poly, and uh, so the, I I I always felt bad about that because I mean it wasn't it was not uh, on purpose. It was a hundred percent an accident, but I felt really bad about it. And I beat myself up about it, like, for so long, thinking, like, oh, my first YCS win doesn't really count or whatever, you know, like, I didn't deserve to win. Uh, and it, it, felt, it felt really bad at the time. Um, even though I had, been, I had been working towards, like, I had been working towards 
winning a tournament for so long, right? I've I'd been waiting for it for so long. Uh, and then for it to be like overshadowed by that, um, it was it was not easy for me. Um, even though I always knew it was an accident, right? And like I didn't do it on purpose and all that. Uh, it didn't help that people were really mad about it too. Um, like the Italians, uh, which I mean, understandably, I I guess, but like. Uh, I don't know. It it's nowadays I can look back at it and I can say, yeah, I worked really hard for it, and I did. Ex I I I do think I deserved to win a YCS at the time. So it, it is what it is. I can live with it. I know that it wasn't. Uh, uh, you know that I didn't do it knowingly, right? It was just a a, a mistake. But uh, yeah, what happened? So my opponent had um, my opponent was it was top four. It wasn't even the finals, but it was top four. And my opponent had a Shadol Construct and a um, Black Dragon Hollow Serpent. And I, I, I top decked Super Poly. Uh, and I didn't realize that... Well, I fused the Construct and the Black Dragon Hollow Serpent. And in my mind, it was like, okay, there's a Shadol, which is the, uh, which is the Shadol monster. And there's also a Light. So I summoned Construct, right? I summoned Construct uh, and attacked for a game later in the turn. Um, but obviously, the the there was a it was a Shadol in a dark and not a Shadol in a light. So yeah, I I, I messed it up. It was uh, a mistake. I summoned the wrong fusion. I do think, for what it's worth, I do think I would still have won that top four match if I had summoned the correct fusion, which was Winda. Um, but at the time, it felt really bad for me. It felt it felt really bad to me. My opponent was really mad about it too after they found out, right? Because during the time, the, it was a feature match, right? It was a feature match. Uh, my opponent didn't realize it. The judges didn't realize it. No one realized it. Um, and then we we finished all that, you know. Uh, and then before the finals happened, uh, my opponent came back and was like really mad about it. And I was like, uh, you know, I was kind of in shock as well. And then they. Uh, they they did a whole thing. They did like a, an in, the, the the Konami did like an investigation as well on it before we even got to play the finals. They checked like the footage to try and find out if they thought it was intentional or not or whatever, and they reached the conclusion that it wasn't intentional. So I was allowed to play the finals. All that kind of stuff. It it, it felt really bad for for me having worked like I feel like worked my ass off for months or years. To, to get to the position to finally win a YCS and then for it to have happened in that fashion was like uh, freaking, uh, yeah, it was bad. I, I didn't, uh, for a long time, for years, I never felt like it was a, uh, a deserved win. When looking back, I, nowadays I can, I can think a little differently on it, but uh, yeah, it was rough as well as providing access to BLS on a whim. Also, very notable here was a card in the side deck that would become a major trouble point for many players in the meta, being Super Polymerization. The card up until now had seen very little play due to never having a deck it could really take advantage of, with the closest being some builds of Hero Beat in the 5Ds and Zexal eras. Here though, with so much more of the meta pivoting towards lights and darks, Super Poly would become an end-all monster removal piece thanks to being completely unrespondable, which gave Shadal a significant advantage moving deeper into the format. The other side here is how Shadal Fusion was effectively a boss monster and two foolish burials at any point the opponent left an extra deck monster on the field, which would continue growing in power as the format went on. With these decks, we would also see the rise in one particular trap card. Vanity's Emptiness was now seeing play in literally every deck of the format, usually at two to three copies in the main, entirely okay, based so on the new threats. On a more positive note, double Cyclone here in the main deck might look, uh, might not, might look uh, weird to some of you guys, because uh, it's like a technically a worse MST, which I'm citing, right? So the reason why I was playing double Cyclone in this deck was um, it had multiple reasons, but basically, I was really worried about drawing dead moral tax, right? I, I didn't like um, that part about my deck is that, like, I mean, the artifact en engine, I think, was really strong, but drawing dead moral tax was, was quite annoying, right? And so I wanted another card that would enable my moral tax, right? And um, Double Cyclone would, would be able to do that, and... The thing about Double Cyclone, the reason why it wasn't actually worse than MST, which is something that's hard to believe, but I mean, um, Double Cyclone was not worse than MST at the time, because the main reason to, to the, the main use 
for MST was Vanity's emptiness, right? You wouldn't really MST face down back rows very often because, I mean, there's Sanctum, there's Moral Tact, there's Shadow Games, all that kind of stuff. You wouldn't blind MST very often. Um, so the way you would simply do it is you would just activate your Shadol Fusion or whichever card you want to activate. Mainly it was Shadol Fusion, right? Activate Shadol Fusion. If your opponent has Emptiness, you can just go double Cyclone, your Shadol Fusion and the Emptiness. And it's the same thing as if you had MST. It doesn't matter um, that it destroys your own card because you can just pop your, your face up Shadol Fusion, right? Uh, and then on another note, uh, it's... Outing your own emptiness is not an argument because some people said that in chat right now. Outing your uh, MST would uh, would out your own emptiness the same way, right? You can just MST. Um, you can even MST your opponent's card, and if that goes into the graveyard, then your emptiness dies. Like that's not an argument. You can do the same with MST. But the scenario specifically, so double cyclone was basically the same as MST almost all the time, unless you drew moral tag. Because if you drew MST with moral tag, you had to MST your own moral tag to make it live. Whereas if you had double cyclone, you could double cyclone your moral attack and their back row. So in that's in that sense, it was better. Um, how are you using Shadol Fusion? Is emptiness is stopping special summon? No, you your opponent would have a set emptiness. You activate Shadol Fusion and they chain emptiness. Right, that's how it would go. The meta taking extreme advantage of board flooding special summons, and this issue was only going to get worse. Joshua would also be the first recipient of the new season's YCS prize card, Ascension Sky Dragon, which, while possible to summon, was not nearly as useful yeah, as the I don't previous have season's that anymore, giant unfortunately. Hand YCS Toronto would be held the same weekend, being another top 16 sealed event, being the first one played with a new Battle Pack 3, but arguably, just as notably, the entire top 32 would be filled out by the new Duelist Alliance decks, with Shadal once again taking the lion's share. Patrick Hoban would take the event after the draft cut, piloting Shadal to the top 16, notably playing three Super Poly in the main to handle all of the duels alliance <laughs> matchups something the else that would become man, very much a trend of the community following this specific top would be the inclusion of upstart goblin at three copies in many 40 card decks while the trend had come and gone a few times before in the past this card would see a massive spike in popularity following hoban's usage with the term upstart hoban being a common occurrence with a theory of playing three upstart i mean it's funny that you bring this up now because this has been a case this has been a thing for the entire year already maybe even 2013 already like all you showed a lot of decks with three upstarts which was mostly Hoban's fault. <laughs> 40 card deck, you're effectively playing a 37 card deck. YCS Lima would be the following week, but unfortunately we have no information at all about this particular event other than knowing the winner was German Pina, who we don't even know the deck of. Over the next few weeks, a few changes would hit the game one after the other, the first being the release of the game's Zexel World Duel Carnival, which brought its promo cards Night Express Night and Special Schedule, cards meant to help enable a level and rank 10 strategy, specifically around Gustav Max at the time, but for the time being would be irrelevant. Following this would be another bandless update, taking effect on October 1st, and would be aimed at solving a few of the early issues with the format as well as balancing out some of the previously hit cards. Newly limited were Infinity Archfiend, a hit to the world's winning deck, as is tradition, Soul Charge, a massive hit to the three of Staple, Super Poly, a hit to the absolute power play of Shadal, and Glow Up Bulb and Raigeki, both returning from zero, with Raigeki specifically turning many heads as it was still a powerful single-sided board clear, but whether it would see play in a format of Grave Triggers would have to be seen. Newly semi-limited, and all returning from one, would be Gale, Gores, Ceasefire, and Transmigration Prophecy, all of which has since passed their relevance. Lastly, unlimited were Coach Soldier Wolfbark, Formula Synchron, Magician of Faith, and Rhoda, with many of these Turning heads this is previously this is a cool thing about uh, that I'm noticing in the, in this video, and I think I noticed it in the previous one as well. They are relatively quick to revert changes that they uh, that they know are not necessary anymore. Like I think it was during this year that Wolf Park got limited, and during the same year it goes back because they realized okay, it's a little past Fire Fist's time, right? You know. Uh, it's something that I'm hoping they can do soon as well when they look at something like Sharvara. I'm hoping they, they can do the same thing with with Sharvara. I think sometimes, um, like I'm looking specifically at some stuff from Toss format right now, like there was no reason for stuff like Gazelle or Harp Horror to be on the ban list for this long, right? I don't really understand why that was the case, right? Um... I don't know. Maybe in maybe it's not been that bad outside of these. I don't know exactly. I can't think of other examples right now. But like specifically, Harpor and uh, and Gazelle were like on there for way too long rogue to unplayable strategies. YCS Dallas would be the first event after this list, taking place on October 5th. To being sell another new top product? No, but that's the thing, right? The, look at, this is the first event after this list, and people are still not going back to playing Fire Fist, right? Uh, and the same thing is true right now. If they bring back 
Garvara now, people are not gonna go and play Unchained in masses and ignore the new cards. Like some people might play should, might play Unchained, but not that many. It's completely fine. And once again, the Duelist Alliance decks would take almost all of the representation, being 31 of the top 32. Billy Break would be crowned the winner after draft, piling his way to top 16 with a 60 card control pile, being a hybrid between Shadal and Burning Abyss, with Curry Bandit providing heavy milling between them. Mar I say let's go because it's Billy winning, but what the fuck is this? <laughs> Marking the player's third YCS win. The beginning of the end is base though. Following this, the next Shonen Jump promo would be released, being Ebon Illusion Magician. It sounds giga fun though. It sounds giga fun. Rank 7 able to detach to summon a normal spellcaster from deck, obviously intended to summon Dark Magician. In addition, it can also banish an opponent's card when a normal spellcaster attacks. This wouldn't be relevant at the time being, but a point worth noting here is that Ebon's alternative summoning method was, at the time, not possible to perform in the TCG of overlaying onto a rank 6 spellcaster, as the card this was intended to work with, Maji Maji Magician Gal, was never imported to the TCG due to Kazuki Takahashi, the creator of Yu-Gi-Oh! and the artist behind the card, refusing for censorship to occur on it, which would have had to happen for the TCG's localization policies at the time. This would lead into the next structure deck a few weeks later, and if there was anything poised to do something about the absolute dominance of Duelist Alliance meta, I'm not sure this was it. Wait, what is this? Oh, new gear Yu-Gi-Oh! Yes. Rampage. Oh. Release date, October 17th, 2014. Yeah, that was not Set it. Set type, structure deck. Major strategies, Girgia. Impact, making a tier 3 deck cheap. Girgia Rampage would be I mean, the third it's and like, I think it had some new cards that were actually good. Like, there are some cards in here, had they been out earlier in the year, they would have been insane. Like, the, the I think Girgia Attacker or something like that is pretty good. Uh, or uh, Girgia Augur as well. I'm not sure. But, like, it was just too late structure deck of the year, being aimed at supplying support back to Girgia, who up until very recently were an extremely capable deck in the metagame. Their new support here included Attacker, who could pop spell traps up to the number of Girgias you control when flipped, able to flip itself back down, Augur, who searches a level 4 Earth Machine on Augur's normal, the good one. Mark 3, able to special a Girgia from hand or grave when summoned by a Girgia card effect, and Girgia Gear Gigant XG, a 3 material rank 3 that can detach XG. a material when a machine battles to negate all face-up effects from the opponent and stun their effects for the attack, recurring a Girgia when sent to grave. These pieces were fairly hit or miss overall, with XG specifically being just too cumbersome to get out due to needing three level 3s to access, though the other three would find their own spaces in the existing deck. Reprints here included the entire Girgia core and Card Trooper, which made the deck extremely cheap and easy to obtain for newer players, though it wouldn't be as successful as the new Duelist Alliance strategies. Speaking of new players though, another reprint set would be released just a week later, and this one was set to be a little hit or miss, but would reprint a few cards everyone needed now. No one needed Vanity's Emptiness. Legendary Collection 5Ds. <laughs> Release date, October 24th, 2014. Set type, reprint set. Major strategies, the 5D staples. Impact, reprinting a buggy boy in a floodgate. Legendary Collection 5Ds is a weird boy. one to talk about in <laughs> retrospect solely because almost none of its reprints were actually relevant to the meta with the exception of exactly two, which were sorely needed at this point. Maxi and Vanity's Emptiness were those reprints, as both had I mean, exploded yeah, in Vanity's Emptiness at the time, I think was a 20 euro common. 20 euro common! over the course of the last few months and we're starting to reach higher prices so the reprints were greatly appreciated but left the rest of the set 30? feeling like a bit of an unfocused mess for the time reprints here included effect failure stardust dragon oh no man i borrowed it and <laughs> formula synchron one for one starlight Red, uh, yeah. battle fader crimson blader blow up bulb black rose dragon the black wing core tg hyper librarian and shooting quasar dragon which was the first eu legal printing of the synchro boss YCS London would be held the same weekend, and unsurprisingly, we'd see no movement outside of the Duelist Alliance decks further solidifying their hierarchy structure, with Marcel Barberi taking the event on Chanel. This takes us to the final core set of the year, and realistically, a meta shakeup wouldn't be here since the Duelist yeah, Alliance decks print. were certain yeah. to be getting new support, but maybe a new deck would be able to rise up into the heavily cold landscape. The new challenge Release date, November 7th, 2014. Set type, core set. Major strategies, Cliffort, Shadal, Burning Abyss. Impact, more fuel on the fire. New Challengers, being the follow-up set to Duelist Alliance, was bound to be an impactful one, bringing both new archetypes to the metagame as well as boosting the power levels of previously introduced ones. Here I have a very polarizing uh, relationship with Denko Seka because I loved it at the time because you would use it to slaughter rogue decks. Then I hated it during my Paleo arc, and now uh, I've won a YCS with it again. Uh... So I don't know how to feel about Denko Seka. I still hate her for what she did to me during Paleo format, but yeah. 
got two new archetypes worth talking about. The first one being Fluffle, a new fusion <laughs> archetype that was actually three different archetypes rolled into one, being Fluffle, Edge Imp, and Frightfur. With this initial wave, we received Edge Imp Sabers, able to summon itself from Grave by stacking a card in hand on top. Uh, hello, what deck would you recommend for a new player, which is not too expensive? What are we recommending at the moment, chat, that's not too expensive? Mm. Runic, Marinces, Sword Soul. Maybe Fire King Tri Brigade. Yeah. Yeah. Fluanda Rees. I mean, Fluanda the, 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 the it depends a little bit on what you're trying to do, right? Uh, because Fluanda Rees is one of the decks that, yes, it's cheap. Yes, it's good. But it's not going to teach you that much. Well, I guess it teaches you a little bit. It's all right. Yeah. One of those options, I would say. Shout outs to the person saying Snake Eyes. That's funny. Top of the deck. Bear, able to be sent from hand to grave to set a toy vendor from deck, able to tribute itself to recur a polymerization from grave to hand. Dog, able to search a Fluffle monster or Edge Imp Sabers on summon. Owl, able to search polymerization on summon, able to pay 500 while on field to fusion summon a Fright Fur. Cat, Able to recur a polymerization from grave to hand when used as fusion material. Fright for Bear, a fusion of Fluffle Bear and Edge of Sabers. Able to equip monsters it destroys in battle to itself, boosting by a thousand for each. Fright for Wolf, a fusion of Sabers and any number of Fluffles. Able to attack once for each material used. And Toy Vendor, a continuous spell that can discard one to draw a card, reveal it, and if it's a Fluffle monster, summon a monster from hand. Otherwise, discard it. Able to search a Fluffle or Edge of Sabers when sent to grave. While interesting on release, Fluffle would move to do very little initially, with almost all relevance for the time being relegated to Wolf's OTKs which saw some minor rogue level play at the time, but would be an archetype to watch over the coming years. The other archetype was Cliffort, a series of machine pendulums that are mostly able to be summoned without tributes, dropping their level and attack values when you do, are unaffected by monster effects of an equal or lower level if normal summoned, and having some form of effect when either tributed or tribute summoned. This initial wave included Scout, a normal monster scale 9 pendulum who can pay 8 to search for a clique card from deck while in the scale, Carrier, who bounces a monster on field when tributed, Helix, who pops a spell trap when tributed, Disc, who summons two Klees from decks if tribute summoned, popping them in the end phase. Uh, this is 2014 Eltlich, by the way, if anyone's wondering. If you, if you haven't played back then, that's the perfect comparison. This is 2014 Eltlich. Well, able to attack twice and pierce... It, it was just basically an advantage engine that could print monsters, um, and it had great synergy with all kinds of different floodgates, period. That, that's what it was. It's like, that, it's 2014 Eltlich. Of tribute summon. Towers, the only non pendulum in the archetype, requiring three tributes to summon, is unaffected by spells, traps, and activated monster effects with a lower level or rank, drops all special summon monsters by 500 attack, and makes your opponent send a card from hand or field to grave of their choice once per turn. And Sacrifice, an equipped spell that boosts by 300, makes the monster unable to be destroyed in battle, treats that monster as two tributes for a Klee summon, and searches a Klee monster when sent to grave. Cliffort on release was immediately recognized as the first truly good pendulum strategy, but rather than what pendulums would be known for being their primary trait, Klees would effectively use pendulum summoning as a means to an end summoning out material to tribute over for their boss monsters so it was commonly that's the thing from a conceptual standpoint i like clifford because it tries to take a different spin on the pendulum mechanic um by basically using them as like tribute fodder and stuff like that like that was okay in my book like i thought that was cool even um and i i still think to this day they should try and make that more often to make pendulum cards that work a little bit differently you know have some creativity with the pendulum stuff and don't make it all just like one uh freaking like uh, pendulum spam or a pile whatever like maybe valmonica i haven't played much valmonica but they look cool from the design i don't think they're very good unfortunately um with cleefort the only problem is that they made them so synergistic with floodgates that was basically the the issue in my opinion because I, I have no issue with the uh, the idea behind it. You know, let's make a pendulum deck that works a little bit differently. Um, you know, make like scales that don't allow you to pendulum summon other stuff. That was cool. It's just the execution wasn't ideal, let's say it like that. For towers, being one of the strongest monsters in the game at this point, as it was almost completely unoutable. So, so this discovery close. would actually ah, be kept maybe. under wraps for a few months. 
Because of this, as well as their ability to go back to normal attack values under skill drain, Cliffort would find a place in the meta almost immediately as a stun strategy, which we'd see with the next YCS. So Teller Knight would receive a couple of new support pieces here in Sirius, who provided a Pot of Avarice-like effect, shuffling back five Teller Knights from Grave to draw one on Summit, being a critical piece of the deck by reloading their key resources like Altair, and Triver, a three material Teller Knight locked rank four that bounces- You say critical piece, I don't think anyone has ever summoned Sirius against me. Entire field on summon, except for itself, able to detach one to hand rip the opponent for one card, reviving a Teller Knight from I don't Grave think and they the Grave that. while it still had material. While this would be an incredibly powerful second wave for the deck, plugging multiple holes in their Trevor strategy, was good. the Teller Knight would continue to be the weakest of the three Duelist Alliance strategies with meta relevance, which would become apparent over the next few YCSs. Shadal would receive a couple of new fusion pieces in Krista, a fire fusion that can negate a special summon by sending a Shadal card from hand to grave with the same fusion float effect as normal, Shekinaga, the earth fusion who can negate the effects of a special summon monster and destroy them by sending a Shadal from hand to grave, and has the standard fusion floating effect, as well as the new fusion spell in El Shadal. Is Shekinaga just construct being tied to like a Cleefort Towers or something like that? I've never thought of it like that. I never looked at it in that much detail. Yes? Okay. I don't know how I feel about that. Fusion, a quick play spell with the standard fusion conditions. While very unassuming, Shekinaga and El Shadal Fusion would be almost instantly slotted in, with Mathematician filling the Earth requirements and El Fusion providing a pseudo tag out option for your fusions to dodge removal and disruption. Yang Xing would receive a couple of new pieces here too in Zhao Tu, a tuner with the standard float effect and can, if you control no other monsters, discard two Yang Xing cards to summon a Yang Xing with zero attack and another with zero defense from the deck. Tao Ti, a dark non tuner who makes his synchro unable to be stolen by the opponent, when? and Yazi, a level 7 synchro that can't be targeted with effects, can pop a Yang Xing and another card the opponent controls once per turn, and if destroyed floats into any worm in the deck. While still not meta, this support would iron out a lot of the early game issues Yang Xing faced, giving the deck an instant starter thanks to Xiaotu's swarming effect. Burning Abyss would receive a second wave of support here in Alec, who negates a monster's effect that turn when sent to grave, Calcap, who bounces a set spell or trap when sent to grave, Rubik, a Burning Abyss tuner monster. To be fair, uh, it didn't really matter what these did, it was just important that they were more names. They just needed more names. The effects on these were barely relevant and Virgil, a level 6 synchro that can discard a BA to spin away an opponent's card once per turn, able to draw a card if destroyed. This wave would be well received by the strategy, namely in that any monsters that had the BA summon condition and BA name would have been well received, yeah. with Rubik and Virgil doing numbers for the strategy and the other two seeing one of play occasionally. UA would also receive another new wave in Midfielder, being a no tribute UA, UA that can bounce a different UA to summon a UA from hand on a quick effect, Goalkeeper, who can prevent a UA from being destroyed once per turn on a quick effect, and Powered Jersey, an equipped spell that boosts a UA by a thousand and doubles the damage it deals in battle against monsters, returning the hand if the equipped UA is bounced. While this wouldn't make UA meta, it would fill a major hole in the strategy thanks to Midfielder being able to trigger stadium search on the first turn, which would let the strategy see minor rogue level play. Moving into the one-offs, Tenko Seko would be a level 4 that locks spells and traps from being set or activated while set while on the field, being an instant staple for Shadal. It's such a dope card, even 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 with my Paleo PTSD, it's, it's such a cool card. Decks for stunning back row and potentially being used for Construct Summon, forming a variant of the deck known as Denko Dolls. Herald of Ultimateness was a level 12 ritual that could discard a fairy to negate any spell, trap, monster effect, or inherent special summon of a monster, being effectively a better version of the previously released Herald of Perfection, not seeing play now but being experimented with over time. Herald of the Arclight was a level 4 synchro that contributed itself to negate any spell, trap, or monster effect, provides a macro effect to monsters sent from hand or deck to grave, and if sent to grave, searches a ritual monster or spell, being experimented with for its field effects for now. Dark Rebellion Exceeds Dragon was a rank 4 that could detach two materials to steal half the attack of an opponent's monster permanently, seeing staple play in various rank 4 strategies. Oasis of Dragon Souls was a continuous trap that, that effectively cool acted as a call the haunted that summoned in defense mode and made the summoned monster a worm, seeing play in Satellar Knight for being copies 4, 5, and 6 of Call. Solemn Scolding that was in a counter trap that too. operated just like Solemn Judgment with the condition of paying 3,000 and having to be the only card set to activate, seeing some experimentation thanks to the power of that effect. Fusion Solemn Substitute was, really was a TCG good. exclusive whose names always treated as polymerization, can only fuse using materials on the field, and can be banished engraved to return a fusion engraved to the extra deck and draw one, seeing some experimentation as a polymerization substitute for some strategies in the short term, but if I mean, if they made this thing, unironically, if they just made it so you could fuse from hand or field, it would be a strictly better polymerization. Uh, that that would have been, been kind of cool, though. I don't know. The fact that it needs to be from field kind of makes it bad. It, it was good in Zodiac specifically, but outside of that, it never really got to do anything. Eventually finding a home as a combo piece a few years from now. Lastly, number 39, Utopia Beyond, was a rank 6 that could drop all opponent's monsters to zero attack on Exceed Summon, and could detach a material to banish an Exceed you control and revive a Utopia monster and gain 1250 life points, seeing play in rank 6 strategies for its summon effect. Following two weeks later would be the Noble they Knights didn't of the Round replace Table box the OG, set, which would bring a couple of new cards to the Noble Knight strategy in Merlin. I mean, you say that, you say they didn't want to replace it, but at the same time, 
it does share the same name so you can't play both in the same deck at three it's not legal right it has the harpy ruling to it right where it has the same name so you can't play both i think that's the point yeah so it is a replacement Bedvir and Last Chapter, but none of these would do anything to push Noble Knights into the meta, though would provide reprints of various cards in an exclusive Platinum rarity that would never be used again after this. With <laughs> I wonder why they never brought that rarity back. Prince of Honest, Valor, Dark Hole, MST, Rhoda, Book of Moon, Foolish Burial, <laughs> Gold Sark, Forbidden Lance, Call the Haunted, Deep Prison, Warning, Torrential, and Compulse. YCS Anaheim would take place three days after this on November 24th. Dude, oh, it, I thought it was perfectly split by three, but I guess that's not possible in top 32, but then freaking Satella ruins my day. The final top 16 sealed event of the year. And though the duels... 11, 10, 9, 2. Yeah. Alliance decks would once again take large chunks of representation in the top 32. Cliffort had rapidly risen to second place in representation, utilizing stun tools to take advantage of the Cliffort summon conditions, but also using trampolines who could... Dude, dust tornado? Why is there dust tornado? What the hell? Why are you so mad about back row? I... Some... Okay. Provide the low scale for Someone is really worried of the mirror match. I'll tell you that. Triple MST, triple Dust Tornado, triple Spell Shattering Arrow. Holy! I'm summoning using Scout, then bounce the Scout with its scale effect to allow they another Cliffhorn to the same match. turn thanks to Scout being a soft once per turn. Patrick Hoven would win the event in the draft top cut, piloting the to top 16 using Burning Abyss, who did not publish his decklist from this event, marking his second YCS win and third major event win overall following Toronto this year and the NAWCQ the previous year. YCS Milan would be held two weeks later, and with the adjustments from the new challengers, Satellar Knight had completely Dude, fallen out of the top 32. I don't want to talk about YCS Swan, Milan. Top I do not want to talk about YCS Milan. I got destroyed on feature match by freaking six samurai and the rest in round was split two between ba shadal and clifford danielle stella would take the event on clifford playing the standard clifford lines as well as the now six samurai for his build ycs sydney 2 would be the following if you're wondering like hey why uh why six samurai out of all things it hasn't appeared in the entire video no one played that yeah exactly i lost round one and i had a feature match in round two against super heavy samurai so i was 0 and 2 i almost came back from it from it i went like 5-2 or 6-2 and then lost Round nine, I think. Oh, yeah. Weekend on December 14th and would be the final YCS of the year, but unfortunately very little is known about this event due to the loss of data from the official Yu-Gi-Oh! website changeover, causing us to not know any of the top 32 from this event. Six Peter Samurai. Mitro would take the event on Shadal, using both Denko Seka and the Six artifacts to provide Samurai. the lights for Construct Summon. And this would mark an end to the events of 2014 in the history of the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game, with the meta fairly stable between Shadal, Burning Abyss, right. and Cliff Warts. <laughs> That's 2014 for y'all. Um, ironically... Even though it's the year where I won my first YCS and it is very often regarded to as a really, really cool year, I don't actually like hat. I mean, it's just because I don't like hat format that much. The rest of it was still pretty cool. But I, I don't like hat format as much as, as people basically make it out to be. Like, I, I don't think it's as good as people make it out to be. But other than that, it's a pretty, it was still a pretty dope year. Um, yeah, that was cool. Make sure, as always, uh, if you enjoy these types of videos, uh, I think, oh no, there's already a pinned comment. Go to the pinned comment and give some love to the law YGO. Appreciate you for making these. Um, always a pleasure to watch. Uh, and yeah. All right. So uh, we are already way past my, my, my usual streaming time. So we're going we're gonna to leave that here. I'll send you guys somewhere. Where do I send you guys? Who's live? Oh, Mr. MBT has booted up stream right now. All right, hold up. Let me... Uh, pop, pop, pop. I'll send you guys to Mr. MBT. Let's go. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for watching. As always, appreciate the subs, appreciate the support. Thank you so much. Uh, hope to see you guys again tomorrow. Make sure to follow the channel if you haven't followed yet. And you guys have a great rest of your, your day. And I'll send you guys over to MBT now. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you for watching. Peace.